Everything comes down through uh, gravity fed from the town, um, right through to here. And this is, um, this is a grinder that's supposed to grind up a lot of that junk. Right here is where we need a headworks building. And that's a mechanical, right back there, right? So this comes in. Four We want to, um, a lot of this project is to put a headworks building in that will give us an ability to get out all the rags and the junk that comes down through the system, all the trash that's in our system. Um, it flows directly right in right now. There's a grinder here, if I, if I remember right, this doesn't work very well. None of them. brand new one. Even the new one. Right. This is Keith Millen, who's our uh, plant operator. operator. Chief Keith operator Millen. for both, both plants. plants. Yep. The grinder is great if you're in a pumping station somewhere out there and it grinds it up preliminarily and now it's small pieces of this water pipe. But in a plant, all you're doing is grinding the trash up if it's sharp. And it doesn't stay sharp for very long. And then lets it pass through right into the system anyway, along with all the grit, scours out all the pipes, and wears out all the parts. And the impeller gets sandblasted with it. Uh, and we're, we have to call a crane once a month to lift this out, set it off to the side so we can clean all the rags off. That thing in the middle? Yep. yep. And put it back in again. Call a crane. Crane every can month. Put it on the lawn? No, it puts it right over there on the table. You can lift it up and set it over there. Oh, okay. And we spend three hours cleaning it off once a month and putting it back in again. And then it starts. We just cleaned it last Friday. You can already see rag material starting to gather on it. And the impeller, inside there, there's a drive shaft. Pete, can you face this way when you try to run the Yeah, right? well, let me go over here then. Yeah, because it's right in the sun. All right. Uh, is that better? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the biggest though thing is the rag material, especially condoms, uh, tie-off strings for heroin addicts or people who shoot um, sugar water or whatever for their diabetes. We find that in here all the time. That those rubber latex items tend to wrap around the drive shaft on that and form a big ball. And as it builds up, you can see the amperage climb on the panel in there it uses more and more electricity to push past all that resistance once it gets up to a certain point we find and we've learned what that point is usually around 94 amps because it'll start tripping out on overload all the time so that's when we call for the crane the crane comes and we do our whole cleaning evolution there. Um, so the rags are really a huge problem and it pushes all the way through it gets hung up on everything it's in our clarifier the last stop before disinfection in the river. It's in the pumps. We have pump clogs frequently. And we have to call for help. We have to take pipes apart, pumps apart, de-rag them, these big balls of rag material all wound together. And, um, when you so, say rags, what are you yeah. talking about? Tampon about? applicators, dental floss, hair, wipes. Wipes Most are the of worst. Like wipes. I mean, Cottonelle wipes, flushable wipes. Can you yeah, these? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's some rag material right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's just constantly, constantly comes in. So those those sound like problems with users. How how would a new system be different? The new system would include a full headworks building, and a headworks is something that's standard in the industry and has been for 30 years. Uh, it's a mechanical bar screen, and now they use fine screens, quarter-inch bar screens. So the influent would come in, uh, hit this bar screen, and as, as it occluded the bar screen, the level would slowly rise. Once it got to a certain point, a sensor would sense that level, activate it, it would come on and continuously turn, and it would bring all that material up and over the top where a scraper would take it, put it into a hopper, and then a hydraulic ram would ram it into a pipe that's perforated with a bunch of holes that would squeeze all the water out of it and put this dry plug in a bin. Oh, and then wow. when the bin's full, waste management or BFI or whoever would come and pick it up and take it to the landfill. Instead of having it end up in here and there and everywhere and in the river. Right. So um, it would also remove the grit. It would classify the grit and remove it. And it would also separate the grease and fat. And that is floating on top there. We've analyzed that at 600 milligrams per liter fat, oil, and grease that comes from the town. Comes from what? From the town. From the users and the restaurants. And we've 
<clears throat> tried to address that numerous times and we're getting nowhere fast with it. We recently, this last month, the month of August, started cycling this air on and off an hour at a time, not only to save electricity, but I'm trying to experiment with nitrification, denitrification, and it's working out really well. So that's a new thing though. Normally this is on all the time and it whips that fat up to the point where you, it's so thick on this side especially, you could walk on it. You could quite literally walk on it. It's this tall. The sun bakes it dry. It starts holding solids so that your mixed liquor concentration goes down, down, down every day. And you're going, how is this possible? We're not getting rid of any. We're not wasting any out of the system. It's because the, the foam or the fat in there is starting to hold a bunch of it. And so by cycling, little by little, that is starting to dissipate some because it's not being whipped up so much all the time. But as you can see, even an hour on, an hour off, and then we're talking since the beginning of this month, that's how much is still floating on top of that tank. Um, and it's a lot. So a full head works with rag removal, grit and grease separation and removal would prevent that. You would have clarity right now. All you would see is clear water as the, the biologics in that have settled. Right now they're denitrifying. Um, you wouldn't see any of that at all. And you wouldn't see any rags hanging on any of these tethers. And if we went with a diffuse air system, you wouldn't have this egg beater that makes a bunch of noise and tosses your process up into the air in the winter time into five degree temperatures and then it cools the entire tank down. And when that happens, the microorganisms that do all the work slow down, their metabolism slows way down. So then you have to increase your population to a high enough level that you make up for that a little bit. And now you're carrying this huge inventory of microbes that need oxygen. One wrong mishap with that thing and all of a sudden you're out of commission and all those bugs are starving for air. And once you get to past 24 hours, they're gonna die. It all goes into a state of anaerobic condition, septic condition, and they'll all die and now you've lost your treatment. So, with, with a Headworks building cleaning all that out and then having diffused air in there, which is pipes that go down to the bottom, and it's kind of like a fish tank with an air stone in the bottom. You see bubbles coming up from the bottom up. It's quiet, it doesn't cool the process down, and it's a complete mix. It mixes the whole tank, so the, you have enhanced treatment, you have far less electrical usage. It would use about a tenth of what this thing is using. This is the biggest energy user in the entire town of Deerfield. Yes. How much energy do you use dollar-wise per month? We're at, I'm well, gonna well, say 6,000 or 7,000 a month electrical. Yeah, a electrical? Yeah, mm -hmm. Old Deerfield's about 3,800 a month. So we're looking at 10, 12,000 dollars a month just for electricity, for the two plants. For the two plants. It's quite a bill. Yeah, um, put that way down. Yeah. So when you talk so, about Headworks equipment, you're going to have to build another whole building. Yes. And have an operation inside. Well, you can get a Headworks that's out in the air, but in the Northeast, you're really asking for it if you do yeah. that. Now you're going to pay extra for a heater kit and then hope it works. So you're better off putting it in a little building that's heated. And where would that go? It would go right over here where that little uh, um, carport is, right there where that car is, right in there generally. A small building that would house all of it. Also, these would be modified into what they call a plug flow scenario. The inflow would come in over there and go this way. We'd put up built-in baffles that would create zones. Um, it could be far enhanced and it would, it would cut biosolids production down, which means less sludge hauling for us. Yes. The biggest expense. Yes. Yeah. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. That's and what. That's what I hope for. Right. No. No. It would make it much safer for everyone. Us, the community, the river. And that's like the last. Stage. That's the yes. last stage. Yes. Yep. After it clarifies, it goes into that chamber over there. That and little chamber by the brick building. Yeah. No. That, it's it, it's no. behind that brick building. The contact okay. chamber goes actually under the building. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And is it liquid or is it powdered? Uh, we use gas chlorine, gas in cylinders. Yeah, 100. We we switched a few years back from 2,000 pound containers to 150 pound cylinders, so there's much less potential for catastrophic leak. Um, 
we have to change the cylinders a lot more often. I mean, you put one of those 2,000 pound ones on, it was good for like three years. <laughs> but 150 is about every month and a half, we're changing a cylinder. We just changed one yesterday. So, um, and that's one of the things that DEP wants us to get rid of. It's, it's very unsafe for everybody. So if you have an accident, you know, they want, they want yeah. us to have all the apparatus to here to, to take care of that. And really our guys aren't, they're not really equipped to run in and do that. So the whole idea is we'd probably call, you know, if we had an accident now, GKP Hazmat would come up yep. and take care of that issue for us. And if we can get the UV, we don't have to be dealing with that at all. It's one of those things that we can check off our list with DEP to have to deal with. Safer for everybody. Yeah. And, and, and really efficient. That generator? Yeah, yes. the generator in here. So backup generator, it's a military surplus generator. I, I've never been clear on whether it's Korean era or Vietnam era. <laughs> I believe it's Korean, but I might be wrong. Nobody's, I get, keep getting two stories there. So uh, it's leased. Yeah, I had just two weeks ago, I had a group of guys come through that I'd never seen before, wanted to know, wanted to see the generator. And then I started asking, well, who are you? And, what are, and they said, oh, we're with the company, such and such company, and we're the ones who leased you this or loaned you this. Oh God. So. We don't even own this? No, no. I thought we bought it as military surplus for cheap. As it turns out, it's just a loaner and we've been oh, using yeah. it for all these years. Oh, oh, did you get it through the military surplus program? I, we don't know. I didn't. No, it was here when I started. <laughs> you know? Well, alone. They might but so right now, it's, yeah. it's very unsafe and it has been forever. The prior chief operator um, was trying this darned us to save energy. So without really thinking too much about it, he had an insulation company come in and spray cellulose all across the ceiling, which is a good thing, right? But he also had him do the, the air louvers, the automatic louver system. Which you can they're all the sealed right with foam Can't and disconnected. Up. So when you start that now, you have to have that door open like that. You have to have the back door open like that because it intakes air from that side and forces it across the engine and out where he's standing, this way. Can you discuss, like, uh, there's a lot of cement structures here. Yeah. How many do you actually use? And I saw some video with leakage from one tank to another. Yeah, well, we were gonna... I'm oh, gonna, you're gonna wander yeah. around. Yeah, okay. yeah. You're ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> if you guys are up to walking, yes. Clarifier. Let's walk. Right? No, this is an empty aeration tank. Where's the clarifier? Clarifier is the circular tank. And we used to have two of them? And we used to have two rectangulars. Oh. Those don't work. Those haven't worked for These years. have not worked for a long time. We have two like that on a smaller scale at Old Deerfield, but they're totally inadequate. They There's way too much energy going through them. We quite often violate our permit for BOD and TSS over there, and um, they just don't have enough detention time. <laughs> So, show us, show us. Okay. So yeah, uh, so again, that's that goes through the grinder, which is not, you know, not uh, efficient, and then into the system, do the aeration and getting the oxygen into that, and then after that, flows into the clarifier. 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 And then if we do end up with any sludge settling in the clarifier, which sometimes we have in the past run that way on purpose, we have a pump down in the basement of this building. It's called a return pump, and it returns that settled sludge back to this tank. So that, because that settled sludge, sludge is only a, an old school word for microorganisms. Okay, it's not anything but that. They are, it's 88 to 92% microbes and only the rest as fixed, fixed solids like sand or calcium or eggshells or whatever, grit, sand. Uh, and it comes back in right there in that pipe. You can hear it actually coming in. Yes. So the flow's coming in, the grinder grinds up trash and makes it smaller trash, and then it goes through, and then the return sludge or microbes come in right there through that pipe, and then all of them swirl around and go down a hole and come out in the middle of the tank. And then the aerator is cycled on and off an hour at a time, 100% on, 100% off, full nitrification, full denitrification, all in one tank, and it's working out really nicely. So. Um, so anyway, both of these tanks hold 518,800 gallons, 0.5188 million gallons. Um, they are the primary, we call them bioreactor, that's where the influent, the waste product is interfaced with the microbes so that the microbes have food to eat. 
we control that population by wasting occasionally to keep it under control because if you don't, the bugs will continue splitting logarithmically. Two become four, four, eight, eight, you know, etc. And they just keep logarithmically growing. So periodically you have to do what they call wasting. You have to store some of those solids for several hours and then valve so that you can pull that concentrated sludge out of the bottom and send it over to the sludge holding tank over there with coagulant or a polymer in, in route to help separate chemically the water from the sludge. So then they separate in that tank under a quiet condition. And then you have what's called top water on top and then the settled concentrated sludge in the bottom. We manually decant that off with a sump pump. We just lower it down until we find the sludge blanket. We have a clear sight glass over there that lets us know when the sludge starts coming through and then we just bring it up a few notches from that and then you watch it go clear and you leave it that leave it there and it takes about two hours to decant the tank usually for about a 20,000 gallon waste um, and that keeps everything in balance so that effluent is clear nitrification is proper and we're minimizing how many sludge loads we have to leave the plant and go to uh, Lowell where it's ultimately disposed of our base expense one of our, big, one of our biggest expense. Yes, is, it is. It's over a hundred thousand dollars a year to get rid of a sludge here. And how do they get rid of it? It's concentrated. The vac truck comes in, pulls it out of the tank, nine thousand gallons at a time, and they drive it to Lowell and discharge it. That would be that square building. Yes. Yep. And there's tanks underneath there's it. Tanks underneath yes. There's that. five okay. tanks there. In okay. fact, you're looking at the wall there in front that's facing us. The the one that's by the uh, old uh, fire extinguisher there. That's tank number one. That's our biggest tank. It's like twenty-two thousand gallons. So the um, sludge is nothing but the microbes and whatever bit. Is that what you're saying? It's is the, the, sludge? the sludge is microbes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you ever do a microbe oh. count or do you tell that there's enough? Every week. So you do? We measure it every week. We know what, and daily we do. Daily we know what our concentration is in the system. That lets us know when it's time to get rid of some. But weekly for permit parameters, we also need to do an official one for the week for DEP and EPA. And we have to maintain a certain average uh, for removal of suspended solids and um, pollution, which I, I refer to BOD. I know you guys hear me saying BOD, biochemical oxygen demand. It's just a way to measure the relative strength of the waste coming in. It's, and, and, and how that's done is how fast it depletes oxygen in a bottle over five days. So we run this test every week for regulatory purposes. And we have permit parameters that tell us if you're over this value for the month, you're in violation, et cetera. So um, we, we're mandated to maintain below those parameters and we do a really good job of it. The problem we have right now with permit, meeting permit, is mostly over at the other plant, Old Deerfield, because of the inadequate clarification there and the on again, off again flow that comes in when school's in, then all of a sudden they all go on spring vacation. Now there's no food for three weeks, then they come back, now it's an avalanche again. And back and forth we go, and it's it's just almost impossible to operate that plant. I did it for seven and a half years. The guy I have over there now has been over there five. He still struggles. And I told him, you're doing a really good job. You're doing the best you can with this plant. We call these jokingly the dinosaur plants because I personally have never seen a more antiquated process in my life in wastewater. I mean, we were doing SCADA and BNR and all the rest of it in Virginia 20 years ago. When How long have you been in wastewater? I've been in wastewater 23 years. 23? Yeah. And how many uh, here and in Virginia? Uh, 12 oh. years in Virginia and almost 13 now here. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's almost 25 years. So I've lost sure. track. <laughs> <laughs> so can we come back to the plug flow design sure. with the baffling, oh, yeah, et cetera? Tony. And how is it going to be implemented with this type of equipment? And how are you going to operate when you're doing all that? <laughs> so what was the question? <laughs> when flow design after the header station then it's maybe going to go to grinding or maybe not coming from that end over towards the bridge yep. this way baffling etc better control of the whole um, oxygenation process so how is that going to get used this infrastructure here and then how will you operate this plant when you're actually installing that? so this tank right now is currently oh okay, okay. So the question is, how will we operate the plant in a plug flow mode, is the first question, once it's done. And the second is, how would we build it? Right. right. 
So the first question of how we would build it. So currently the plant has two tanks. These are each a half a million gallon tanks. To meet the treatment requirements, they only need to run on, Keith, correct me, that's, that's basin one, right? And this mm -hmm. is basin two? Yeah. So they only need to run on basin one. So temporarily, you do all the construction you need here in basin two, get this set up in plug flow, get your aeration system in, get your mixers in. You'd switch the flow to here temporarily, Ooh. coring holes through the walls, making temporary penetrations. You'd run on this during construction, build the other side. On the other side, there'd be a channel to distribute the flow between the two plug flow reactors. And then from there, it would flow plug flow through this tank, through this tank, There'll be a building here that pumps the sludge. Keith, did you get through? Did you do the we return? We didn't even do this yet. Yeah. Well, okay. kind of a return, yeah. Where so, it comes out over and there. And then the return sludge would go back. Instead of going right where it goes up there, where the grinder is, it would go back to the front of the tank. Yep. There'll be a building here in between both clarifiers. And this concrete infrastructure you can actually use? Yes. So concrete tanks have a general life of, if you do no maintenance on them, 75 years. And with maintenance, because the tanks are generally full of water, it's at the water level where the maintenance needs to be done. Now you have some cracks, but those can be fixed with injections. And then if you look, most of your concrete at the top, yeah. just you, you chip out the bad concrete, you put new concrete in. Now the one structural concrete issue is actually not with these tanks. In the sludge building, there's a tank where if Keith drops the level, the water literally flows through the concrete. you saw that in the video. That's some of the video they've seen. Yeah leaking between tanks. So that's your only structural concrete issues over there? That, that we know of, yes. Yep. So really the plan is set. A new headworks, this work here, so we have aeration from the bottom up. We're already fixing this clarifier, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, build a secondary clarifier here, so we're, we have two that we can run. They'll also get caps on them, covers, because yes. the problem with that one, why it broke, we lost electricity, correct me if I'm wrong, lost electricity for a little bit of time. Um, and that was right when we had that polar vortex a year and a half ago. Yep. And uh, so we had ice build up around the ring. And when it turned back on again, the arm just kind of just busted up the ice and, and broke and went underwater. Um, the plan is also resiliency here. With a lot of flooding and climate change, we want to raise the walls around these. We wouldn't raise these, we'd probably build walls around the outside of them that are taller. That actually keeps the heat in a little bit. So you don't have you don't have to um, worry so much about freezing, but we also put covers on these clarifiers so that they're they're not going to be susceptible to that freeze ever again. And that's not the only thing they're susceptible to without covers. Every fall, yep. we get half these leaves in that clarifier, uh -huh. and when the skimmer arm is operational and functional in the way it's supposed to be, we have this little tiny hopper that it that it uh, skims off to little tiny opening and a little four inch line that goes over to the scum well that takes that and it plugs constantly so we're out here half the week with this homemade blaster thing that we made out of pvc trying to blow out the leaves so that it will go down properly and in the winter time when that happens where you have freezing sometimes when in the fall that mass will freeze hard and to become a brick in the hopper yeah. then we have to get out uh, this big heat blaster thing with propane tank and it's really dangerous it's not yeah. good the other issue is in the summertime, algae grows like a machine in that tank. Yeah. And that creates BOD or a demand for oxygen in our effluent stream. We have sometimes effluent so clear that we're less than one milligram per liter. And that one little trace is algae on the filter. Not anything else. It's algae from the clarifier. You can actually see the little flakes of green on it. Yep. So so with covering, uh, you'll cut down on algae growth? Yeah. When you cover that, no sunlight, yeah, no, no photosynthetic process, algae's gone. Now, onto that scum beach that keeps talking about. Do we want to walk over there? Sure, yeah. let's do that. This is, go ahead, go. So this is a settling and separation process. So basically, you go into this tank. It's, it's a quiescent zone. So basically, there's besides the water on top, there's no movement. And the sludge is heavier than the water. So the sludge, by nature, wants to settle to the bottom. So what this tank does is it settles it to the bottom, it concentrates it, there's a mechanism underneath that actually rotates in a circle, and as it rotates, it has, for lack of a better term, squeegees that push the sludge, sludge to the center of the tank. From the center of the tank, there's pipes connected to pumps in that building that then pump it up 
back to the biological process. It's a return of the microorganisms. <laughs> so this, this tank was put in in 1982, and it was put in because at the time the plant was having difficulty meeting permit due to all the organic loads coming from the cane pickle factory. So since it's been put in, this tank has four times the volume and area as those tanks over there does. So it basically increased the capacity to settle by a factor of four. It's been run since it was put in. The other tanks, they haven't run as long as you've been here. And that they haven't been running at least since 05 when I started working with the town. Mm -hmm. On the new design, some of the issues that the town has Keith was talking about the leaves and the, the, the scum mechanism he's talking about is that little square thing in the corner over there. It's called a scum beach. They make ones that run the full length of the tank. So because of the issues with the leaves, and Keith will talk a little bit about the issues they have with the scum, but because of the issues they have with the scum, the decision was made to put them one that runs the full length of the radius of the tank because mm -hmm. it's more effective at getting things out, getting things out quicker and more efficiently and making their, their lives easier. Uh, yeah, the foam and fat that you see on that tank under high flow conditions when we get a lot of rain, the flow, because the collection system is in such bad shape, a two hour intense rain means 50,000 gallon jump in our flow, just like that. It's almost instantaneous. And what that does is it pushes more and more of the contents of that bioreactor uh, tank into here so that the sludge starts to pile up pretty quick. Um, when it does that, it's not a problem. We can increase our pumping rate, etc. However, it also pushes a large quantity of that fat, oil, and grease into the center well. The center well will muffin top. It will come way up high, freeze, and during the warm season, it leaks out through the sides, comes all across this tank. Um, Kevin Scarborough, I don't think he's here right now, but when he was here last year, looking at the damage to the arm, trying to figure out maybe another way to fix it, this whole tank was covered with foam, like that. And this is the last stop before the river. It was just totally unacceptable. There's no way to control that because of the way the plant is set up and with the equipment that we don't have here. And a great point to that, just people might think, you know, you have it, you know, when everything comes into the plant, we have like a holding tank to just kind of minimize how much flow is coming through the system. It's a constant flow. So whatever comes down the hill, goes out the river at the same rate. There's yep. no way to kind of slow that down and process some of it and then push it out at a different time. Whatever's coming through the system gets pushed the into driver. there and pushed into here yeah. and pushed out to the river. So yeah. you've got to treat it fast on a really heavy flow yeah. and you don't have time a lot of times to get all that done. Exit here. I'll show you in a minute. Yep. We'll show you uh, most plants do have a redundant tanks so that they can use them to take that hydraulic load out of the picture. If there's going to be a bunch of flow coming because of the rain, you go open the gate to an empty tank and take some of that energy out before it reaches the final clarifier. So it won't upset the blanket, it won't upset treatment. Um, we don't have that option here. Right. And if I did divert it to this empty aeration tank, there's no drains on these tanks. So you have to pump out whatever you put in there. And if you're pumping, if you're putting in any kind of microbes in there, you're going to lose those. So you've just essentially wasted however much is left in that tank out of the system, whether you needed to or not, whether it's good for treatment or not. You don't have a choice. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it really, a lot of this stuff is old school, but it works pretty well. But I got to tell you, it is like this working here. It's like you're just bound with no choices. At every turn, there's no choice. It's very frustrating at times when you know there's better ways of doing it, more cost-effective ways of doing it, and we would save the town money on top of it. Instead of ignoring it and putting it off and putting it off, while well, everything gets more and more expensive year after year after year, that's not the way to go. It's not. Now is the time mm -hmm. to upgrade and be good for a long time. And while you're doing that, put a little money aside so that next time there won't be this huge bill anymore. That's the yep. way to go, in my opinion. Yep. So. So, so in terms of clarifier, we talked about secondary clarifier and talked about covering these. What other enhancements would be done to this existing clarifier? That whole drive mechanism will be replaced. The walkway. Let's let's just look at the walkway for a minute. I Don't just want you a bunch to... of people on there. No. Is that the middle one that's <laughs> yeah. broken? You can see it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not see going it. on there. You, you, you go out there first. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just this morning. 
my god my co-worker gary every morning he comes in at seven o'clock sips a little tea and comes out here with a net and goes over to the center well and nets out material that's in there um cool. is that the that's a tiny the little pile yeah just from daily you know he does it until it's a big pile and then he scoops it up but you wouldn't believe what's in there and the other thing is the rags are working all the way through when we waste they're in the bottom they're being they're being concentrated in the bottom by the settled sludge so when we waste the rags get wasted to the sludge tank and when the hauler comes and he pulls that into his tank and he gets to lull they are responsible to watch as they discharge through that bar rack at Lowell. And as soon as they start seeing rags, they stop everything and the driver has to rake all that stuff up. And then Lowell looks at that if it happens three times, which it has for us now, twice, the price just went up. Really? It was six cents a gallon, then it's seven cents a gallon, then it's nine cents a gallon, now it's 12 cents a gallon. So the price goes up to get rid of it in Lowell. No, that's how much they're charging us to take our sludge knowing that there's rags in it. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. Because of the extra rag. labor to yep. Yeah. So, and it ruins their equipment because they're yes. running a really clean process. Yeah. They have centrifuges there that really thicken it up to like almost 20% cake. Then it goes into a furnace and gets burned. But they can't do it with rags in it. So, so would the new system ameliorate that in any way? Or is it just so good? Yes, everybody? the head works would take all that out. So it would not make it through the whole planet. It would be stopped good right there. It would not come to here, it would not come to here, it would not go there, it would not be anywhere except up there. So, here's our lovely walkway. You can see as you look down this side, there's rust all the way down, and it just keeps spreading a little bit wider month by month by month. And we have to come out here every day, at least twice, and take blanket readings and stuff. You know, we're a year and three months into this breakage that happened January of 2017 oh, or on something. The arm, on the arm. 18? Yeah. And the walkway too. Is oh, correct. and the walkway also yeah. happened then? Oh. No. No, that's when it started. Oh. Everything started that year. What's the water trickle purpose of it? To keep the fat and stuff to a minimum, yeah. Yeah, and that's a homemade thing. We're running a sump pump with a hose, an oscillating sprinkler, and the dripper thing we made out of okay. yeah just kind of dirty with the whole thing yeah when when it's when it was all said and done something about this clarifier settled a little unevenly and when it's when the flow is very low like it is now if you go over to that far side right over there there's no flow going on the weirs at all it's all coming this way on this side and because of it's doing that uv damage has occurred all on the concrete over there it's all chipping away it's all crumbling because it's never wet anymore it's always dry so it gets wet when the flow goes way up like during a rain event so are you going to address that in well all that's going to be done yeah any concrete patchwork's going to be done too as part of the rehab okay. and that's not an option anymore the rehab is being mandated by DEP. we're in violation so and it's worth investing in this clarifier we have no choice there is no other you have to have one rather than building more clarifiers and well we have to have a redundant clarifier yeah. too we have no backup okay but it's worthwhile to invest in this even after you build one or two others because you could decommission this if you thought it was better to build two new ones well we don't have the space yeah we don't have okay. the space <laughs> we don't anything over here with an idea of maybe Okay, and yeah. what are you doing with this infrastructure here? Are you These are old clarifiers that were here. They were built in the early 1970s. They're when coming, out? Either coming out? Or, uh, it's three quarters of a million dollars to rehab these. So and, and they don't work worth a damn when they're fully operated. Um, so sorry. Need new ones. So they're made no, this is the new one. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, so this replaced those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a much better way to go here. So. What will happen with the I don't know. I, I'm hoping they'll backfill them or do something else with the space or you know, make use of that. It's already been dug out. So. Have you ever had anybody fall in there? No. No, there's only been one death that I'm aware of ever at this plant, and it was a dog. Fall in there? Is that what you're If you don't know how to swim, you could. Yeah. You could swim. You can't swim in that, though, because once that's on, all that air lowers the specific gravity and you can't even tread water. And it's even worse with the diffuse system. 
it's just there's no treading in that so you might make it around the edge of this one though i don't know but this yeah if you know how to swim you're, you're good you can swim to the edge huh okay yeah <laughs> you wouldn't turn into it i gotta tell you though our effluent right now is clearer than the drinking water you guys are getting at your house because we do their tests every week for them and they usually get about 2.1 milligrams per liter on the filter we get usually 0.6 what is that compared to drinking water our, our drinking. oh our drinking your water drinking is water is our way food. more full of stuff <laughs> nice and rusty <laughs> i hope you all have brita filters because it's pretty rusty water you're drinking <laughs> you want to show them the other uh yeah the contact chamber sure Come on. so when the flow leaves the final clarifier it comes through this pipe and this channel it goes through this what they call a partial flume this is a nine inch partial flume these are very these are engineered specific to the flow range anticipated at each plant it's all mathematical in how it works bottom line is that narrow constriction increases the velocity and the height as it goes through so as that occurs, this little gadget here sends a sound wave signal that bounces off the water and comes back. And the shorter that time takes, the higher the flow. And it's all set up in electronics to read that as a flow in millions of gallons per day. So it comes through here, the flow gets measured, and this is really unusual. Both plants have flow measurement at the end of the plant. Most plants do the flow measurement when it's first coming in. Tony's plan is to put flow measurement at the beginning of the plant, which is a really good idea. And here's you, why. You tie that into the control of the aeration and everything? You know what's coming no. No. It doesn't need to be doesn't at all. No. Uh, the reason it's better, it's more beneficial to put it at the beginning of the plant, well, there's a lot of reasons, but the biggest one for me is when I waste sometimes when the flow is this low, I'm wasting more than the flow itself that's coming in here. So I have zero overflow coming out of that tank. So I, this gets dry and it shows zero flow, even though there's flow coming into the plant. If I decant the holding tank over there, I'm putting flow back in that actually was taken out of a day prior to today. So unless you account for every little thing, it's very complicated to figure out how much you're putting in, taking out, all this, having this here. If you put it at the beginning of the plant, now you know what your flow is for the day. You can do all you want internally, however you need to do it. It's not going to impact that flow figure at all. And a lot of things get based on flow. The size of the plant, the size of the partial flume, the size of the tank, the settling rate, and all these other things count on a certain range of flow. So it's really critical to have an accurate number for that before you start spending a lot of money to upgrade things and stuff. Tony has been, him and uh, Dave have been exhaustive in their efforts to identify critical areas of concern to take inventory on all of our equipment and really look take a really hard look at it more than anybody else has ever done and he had a little bit of advantage with that too because he was formerly employed with Wesson and Samson and they have also come through our plants numerous times to try to help us with 20-year plans and goals for the future and how we can plan and save for that stuff so he's really on top of both plants and what they need more than anybody else could ever be. I mean, if you can go with anybody else, they're going to have to start right from scratch again. We've all never over. taken advantage of all of those studies, all the stuff Western and Samson did for years. Yes. Um, there's studies on the shelf. Everybody understands we need a headwork so we you know, get away from fluorination, we need better, clar uh, better clarifiers. All of that's been studied many times over. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars to know that. It's time to just move on and get started on this stuff, especially when we have the U.S. federal government giving us $2.6 million. If we can pass this vote on Friday, on the, the 9th of September, we can take a hold of $2.6 million and a 40-year loan at 2 and an eighth percent, which is unheard of. So it'll never get cheaper. It's only getting more. So I think somebody said uh, 2005, it was $6 million bucks to do this. Yeah. Yep. So here we are, 15 years later, we're looking at 19 million, yeah. between 13 and 19, depending on what we're gonna tackle here. But I mean, it just keeps getting more expensive every year. And if we're not gonna tackle this job now, when we get a grant, USDA is not gonna come back four years from now and go, oh, now you're ready? Oh, here's some money. 
this is it. They've done a lot of work. Our engineers have done a lot of work. The town's done a lot of work. You know, Keith has worked hard. We've all been studying this issue for years. And uh, even just since the time I've been a selectman, um, it's never going to be as cheap as it is today to get moving. Now, whether we spend $19 million or not, we're still going to get a grant. We're still going to address this. We've got all kinds of design work to do ahead of us to make it as efficient as we can and save the taxpayers money. Um, it's just only going to get more expensive if we wait, and we're not going to have any federal grant to do it. So we'd love your support, and um, I'm glad you all came today. To yeah, me too. We still got a little bit more. Wow. After it goes through here, you will talk about how it contacts with the water before it goes out to the river. And then maybe sludge handling on the way back. Sludge handling on the way back? Yeah. Who is going here? Yeah, that's important. If, that's the if end this of it, goes right? through, when would it start and when would it finish? So after it goes through the partial flow and the flow gets measured, it comes through here. Bangs a hard left, goes past that little piece of PVC in the channel there. That is injecting or ejecting water and gaseous chlorine blended into the channel. And then from there it goes all the way to the back, hangs a UE, goes back in the middle, hangs a UE, and goes back again so it has adequate time. So the chlorine has adequate time in the water to disinfect it before it finally goes out into the pipe and then over to the river and out. And out so that's just the residence time, all that. The residence time, time, yes. Yep. So the higher the flow is, the shorter the time is in this tank, too. Right. So when the flow picks up quickly, sometimes we'll have to make a quick adjustment on the chlorine to make sure. Because there's like a two hour, hour to two hour lag when you make an adjustment before you actually see it. So big rain events happening as it starts, and it's projected to go like all day. That's when you start moving the chlorine up a little at a time, a little at a time, and measuring your residual, make sure you're still compliant with the regulatory people. You can have, they, what, they, what they want is disinfection at one milligram per liter or less, but more than zero. So you have to be somewhere between zero and one milligram per liter at all times. During chlorine season, which is April 1st to October 31st. Okay. You have to chlorine. And rainfall is the primary thing that causes have high, high or high flow. What does? Rainfall? Yeah. Rainfall, yeah. Factors? That's the primary thing for higher flows. Especially when it's been raining a lot regularly, like last year, and the water table comes up. Now, there's no place for that water to perk to, so it stays on the surface, and then it works into the collection system. It actually pushes through the cracks in the collection system and takes it all the way up. Normally, when it rains, the water perks down, and goes past the collection system into the water table, and you get a little bit of a bump. If it's been dry for a really long time, that's what you see. But the minute it starts raining two, three times a week, an inch here, two inches there, regularly for weeks, like it did last year. Last year, this plant is designed for 850,000 gallons a day, and last year, for almost six weeks, that was our low flow for overnight. We were at 1.2 million gallons a day. And we were pushing all that fat into the clarifier. We were stockpiling solids into that clarifier because we had no choice about it. We had no way to divert the flow or do anything else with it. Uh, it was very problematic. And now I'm grateful we have a 300,000 gallon flow. Does anybody want or need to go inside the building? I don't see anything there. It's very old. This is the original plant building. They call it the lower building. And in there is a panel an electrical panel that's supplying all the power to the pump downstairs and to the aerator. It's a 75 horsepower motor. It's the largest energy user in the town. This is part of the reason you have a 6000 7000 dollar a month electric. Uh, and the panel that is pushing that juice to it is 1970. So it's an old obsolete front panel, and I've been told by Elmo Electric. God help you if anything happens to the bus bars in this bucket, so, because you're going to need a whole new panel. And that means bringing a panel in, installing it, and then doing a temporary hookup in while you just have a good one. You know, or they have to bring one in on the train. There's no backup. So as far as this project is up there, you have to put supplies. Yeah, in fact, the building that supplies the power to the new air and the ground is improved on it. Be in a little building that's like a fence at the end of this building. Um, so 
will catch a little fray if we get too close to that bank. That's why we have this old wooden wall up. And it's in the winter time, the wind blows from the north pretty hard. Splatter it all over the pavement and turn it into an ice skating rink. So, a long time ago, we put this wood up just to help. <laughs> So after after we wait, head on over there, and I'll. We're standing on right now is a combination of sludge tank one and sludge tank two. The dividing line is right where your foot is. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, 22, 23,000 gallons, uh, 18,000 gallons, and on the other side there's three tanks. One on each end are 9,000 gallons, and the one in the middle is about 16,000. The only tank that we can use out of all of these for wasting is this one, because we have one valve right here. And when I open that valve, it's two ways. I either return to this tank, or I turn the other way and I waste to this tank. And while I'm doing this, I cannot do that. One or the other, binary all the way here. Uh, so if anything happens to that valve, we won't be able to get rid of sludge like we need to, which is a really bad thing. We have no ability to put anything in here directly with waste. I would literally have to either fill this up and let it overflow through an overflow pipe or hole in the wall underneath that plate and backfill this one, or I would have to fill this up to wherever and then transfer it by going downstairs and opening and putting a bunch of valves using a pump transfer it to this tank instead of being able to waste through it directly. So we pretty much use this tank all the time for wasting because that's really the only one we can use. Well, yes. Yeah. You said the other tank. Is that the original design or something else or another? The original design had this one big tank open. No cover on it, nothing. It was a normal mixture like that. What? Uh, I believe when they did the Circular clarifier, and I don't know when they did this modification. Yes, they designed it so that it could be pumped upstairs to the old press gravity belt fixer, which no longer is functioning and has it for a long time, and then the landfill took that cap. So they decided it was more it was more cost effective for the town at that point to haul the plug away. So they started doing it that way. For what we're doing now, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So what? I, hopefully, if the upgrade goes through, what we're looking to do with that is they have new technologies now. There's a lot of different ways to dewater sludge that are far more effective than gravity settling and hoping to get a lot of water back. It's, what I'm really looking to do is get a rotary drum thickness. And you can pump directly to that thickener as you're wasting and have this thing operate in real time to separate the water and the sludge with a little polymer distance. It uses centrifugal force to separate along with a little polymer. Now this is not a digest. It depends on what mechanism they've chosen to dry with. But no. You can. A rotary drum thicker you can take from, if we were still going to send it to Lowell, it would be 5%. You know, we're doing 3% now with gravity. But, with digestion and or composting and or other land applications, if we can figure out a way to filter out the copper, we'd be able to land apply this stuff again as a Class A compost. Uh, we could go to 15% solid for that same use that rotary drum thicker. So, and it would still leave us the option if that thing went down or it needed maintenance, we could still eventually waste this thing. So we'd have both. Uh, if we needed to waste more and we had room uh, to deal with, say, the truck was full from the thickened stuff, we could still continue wasting just by turning the valve and sending the rest of it over here. We'd have some options there. So right now, we don't have any options with anything. Everything is all your eggs in one basket, one tank, one way, that's it. So, and it's like operating with your back up against the wall. It's like driving around all the time with no fair tire, and now you're out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, and you're just going like this. You know, it's like <laughs> I mean, there are, so, especially in the winter. This is very problematic in the winter time. We spend 
a good hour every time we're out here decanting or we have a slip hole with a heat gun unfreezing all these pipes and often during a polar vortex you get the thing to unfroze just enough to tweak it the way you want do your sledge haul and then when you go back to revalve the other way you have to un use the heat gun again to unfreeze them to turn them off so twice a week sometimes only once a week um, but the average is twice you know on a yearly basis it's twice a week. 9,000 gallon loads, averaging about 3% off. It's not sure. It's not sure. Right now it's going to lull, but since I've been with the town, it went to Pittsburgh, to their incinerator, then they shut the incinerator down. Then it went to Upper Blackstone, then they said, nope, you can't take your stuff, full rags. And then it went to Warwick, Rhode Island, and they basically were on again, off again. You never knew if they were going to let you dump there or not. And then Lowell decided to get in on the game because there's so much money to go. And they did this elaborate thing and every single year he raises the price. So the price keeps going. It's been a good two years and we've gone from seven cents a gallon to six. So, and it's all about the rags, by the way. The rags. Pardon me? You know, Lowell actually processes everyone's sludge and then they off it to somebody else, but ultimately it does go to incineration. Where? I'm not sure. They don't have their own incinerator. <laughs> Any other questions? So out of five tanks, we can use one. Freezing is constantly a problem. Uh, in the summertime, and this is what we've been really struggling with a lot this year, when it's hot like this, the flow is low, we waste, we let it sit for a couple days so that it really separates, we maximize how much water we get out of it. And while we're doing that, the top layer that's floating is drying out. And when it dries out, it starts baking and puffing up just like a muffin in an oven. And then you have this big, thick blanket that now wants to float up and down in the tank while you decant and waste and decant and waste. This, this whole thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we've had to get really creative to deal with that. We use that hose right there with water, an inch and a quarter line, and blast it with water. We open this plate up and we shoot it from this side. We turn the pump on and try to toss it. That's the other thing. We can't mix this whole tank because there's a wall in here that they put in for the sump pump to isolate it from rag material. So now the rag material collects in that cubby and it prevents us from stirring the whole tank. There is no mechanical mixer here. It needs one. There's no aerated mixer. That would also be useful. Uh, the, the only way we have is using the pumps downstairs, opening, having it sucked from the bottom valve and discharging through the top for like three days straight. And then we make that top layer go from about this big to about this big, and then we start all over again. And we just do that from all through July and August to part of September, and then when it starts cooling down, that start of, starts to abate and we're back to a more and more scenario. But, so winter is freezing problems, summer is baking problems. And <laughs> it can. Uh, during snow melt time, with high flows, especially during a rainy spring, the river can come up so high, almost to the point of flooding the plant. And we have a giant pump down in that lower building we call Big Bertha. It's the plant effluent water pump. It's got these giant gate valves on them, and you fire that thing up and it works off a bubbler system. Meaning, the river comes up, the head pressure or the pressure from all that height pushes back through the effluent line and starts to backfill the plant and prevent the plant from discharging. So we have a check valve right by that water hose or that plate on the, on the dock there. That plate, if you lift it up, there you can look down in and you can actually see a giant check valve that's slightly open from the effluent. So if the river was pushing back in, it would slam that closed to prevent that. But then the pump would see that height, as the height came up in the wet well, it pushes a bubble back through a, a tube called a bubbler system. And when it reaches a sensor at a certain level, it kicks Big Bertha on. And now Big Bertha just pumps right past that check valve and everything out there pumps it out into the river so that we can continue discharge. And we don't lose a lot of our microbes to a flooding, back flooding. Because the microbes are the treatment. 
Without those, you have nothing. You have no training at all. So that's kind of all I got, but I'm here to answer anybody's questions about any part of this operation. If you want to ask anything about the curious about it, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. I really, way bigger turnout than I thought it would be, but thank you very much. Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Select Board Sewer Commissioners meeting of August 20th, uh, 2019 for the town of Deerfield. Um, we've had an open house uh, earlier. This earlier part of our meeting was an open house at the South Deerfield Treatment Plant at uh, 150 Sunderland Road uh, down by the river where we toured the plant and uh, gave people an insight into what's going on there, what we plan to do, what the conditions are now, um, and then we thought we'd rejoin everybody back here at Town Hall at um, 6.30 to just kind of recap that, um, answer questions that have been out there in the public for the last several months since our uh, previous debt exclusion vote. So, um, you know, I guess the agenda tonight was to try to just answer people's questions on what they may still have outstanding, give people an update on what we're, what we're hoping to do. Um, what's going on with the project so far, where we've gotten in our grant approval process, um, and then just really to hear from you what your questions are and try to answer those. Um, we want to get as much information out before the September 9th um, debt exclusion vote. So um, I can just start by going over a few, um, you know, a few items that, that I've heard from people in the past you know, month or so since, since we've had the last vote. And, um, we heard loud and clear we need to get more information out there, so this meeting is one of those nights, is to try and get as much clarity out there to the public as we can about what we're doing and what our needs are. So I'll just go down a little bit of list here. If I capture something that people had a question, or if they want to ask, you know, follow up to this, just, just raise your hand and we'll call on you. Um, so one of the questions was, um, and it was brought up at the town meeting when we got approval for this project, for the spending for the project, the annual town meeting, was um, we heard that we hadn't prepared for this, um, that the, you know, we're in this condition right now because we have a huge amount of expense and we really have no money to fix it at the moment. And that was accurate. You know, the town um, has tried to keep sewer rates at a low rate for many, many years so that, um, we can make it affordable for the residents. You know, it's, it's, you know, you try to keep the bills as low as you can for your residents. But while doing that, we hadn't put money aside um, to, you know, to, have a, to have money aside to fix these issues when they came up. Um, a lot of times the repairs in the past have been you know, grants or the plant was built on a grant. So um, we heard that and we, you know, over the last year or so we had, we've created an enterprise fund. So before when the, when the sewer rates would happen, we'd, we'd have a pool of money to, to operate the plant for the year and any leftover would go back to the general fund. Um, we had decided like our EMS building, our, our EMS um, infrastructure, we have an enterprise fund. So that just means that the money that we raise during the year kind of stays with that fund. So any excess can be put, put aside to spend on that project for operations and repairs. Um, so that, that went into effect at um, last, last year, and it, it takes a full year. You can't spend any money or any reserves that you've had for a while until it's certified free cash, a lot like our regular town. Um, that should be certified this year, uh, this fall, usually in October. We have built up about uh, $900,000 right now in that fund, so um, that we can start addressing some of these issues and, and pay for some of this project out of that, out of that fund. Um, so that's one part that we've done uh, to prepare for this. And we've also been working very hard with our engineer and with USDA to secure a grant and a loan to make this affordable. Um, and I've, I've uh, been notified this past week and hoping for uh, a vote tonight and uh, maybe on the 28th to um, allow us, allow me to sign on behalf of the town um, about a $2.6 million grant from USDA to help fund this project. Um, thank you. Um, it's I, I just want to interrupt for a minute because, um, of course, Dave Prickett, our engineer, did a lot by making sure all the paperwork was there and all the questions were answered and 
you know, whether it was endangered species stuff filled out and all that. That took a but lot. That was a lot. But it was a personal hustle on Trevor's part to go down and meet with the people and talk to them. And it, it really is a lot of work. And I just, because I've done it in the past, I know how much work it is. And I think we owe Trevor a huge, huge, no. huge hand. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's, definitely a, it's definitely a team effort. And, and again, they, you know, even USDA has worked a ton on this project about filings and making sure everything's in, in order. And, you know, our town administrators uh, have been working on this project as well, uh, even in the office. A everybody, it's been a group effort to get this thing approved. And there's been a lot of stuff that um, even uh, our engineers, Dave Prickett, they had to do over and above what, you know, what they were planning. So they spent a lot outside of that when, when all these things had to come up and get hurdles. I guess, you know, hurdles, you, you get thrown up at you and you, you have to climb over them. So. We've done a lot, and I'm hoping to do that. So that the grant is one part, but also the loan is another. Um, so we've secured, um, we're hoping, and we'll sign on next Thursday, um, a, a loan for 40 years for uh, at, at poverty rate for Deerfield, which is uh, right now is around two and an eighth percent, which is really low for any time you're trying to tackle a project. So that that helps make the project affordable long term. So these items aren't going to be here for long. Um, we, we need to take advantage of it now. Um, they aren't coming back to help us. If we say no this time, um, they're really, you know, they'll move on to the other community. They pulled money from all over the nation that hadn't been used in other project and put it together to get us, um, you know, this money. And, and, you know, it's not a ton of money, but it's a whole lot of money. <laughs> so, I mean, you look at a big project like this, and the first grant that we applied for was just over 13 million. Um, that's uh, for the phase one of the project, and that, um, that's a good chunk of money for us. I mean, it's a, it makes it affordable for other people. It's still going to be a lot. It's still a, a big investment for our town, but um, without that, it would be devastating. So, um, so we're really excited about that. Um, so um, there were other questions. I'll just go down the list of questions. I heard uh, there was one question about um, do we limit people's ability to be on the sewer? And we don't. Um, the only limits are really per engineering. If it, if it goes by your house, you're on the sewer. Um, we haven't done many expansions other than the new um, condo project on Sugarloaf Street it had paid for their infrastructure to hook into our system. So we're gaining you know about 70 new uh, users on that. Um, but there isn't any reason we wouldn't allow somebody in other than you know, we have the capacity now, it's just that the plant is in such horrible shape that you really don't want to take on a ton of new uh, infrastructure there. So uh, I'm not really sure ab about the question or if there's other backgrounds, so if anyone has any other backgrounds on it, but we don't limit uh, who can be on the system. Um, it really has to do with engineering capacity and cost, I guess. Um, so the new system um, will have increased capacity and cost less to run. So there was questions on, you know, I guess related to that, do we, would we um, allow people to be on it and can we, can we handle that load? And when we make these changes, um, just if anyone was there today looking and talking with the engineers and, and Keith that run the plant, it's woefully inadequate and inefficient how we run that system. And we can do so much better with the technology that's come around in the last 30 years that we really need to, to update it. So um, it will cost a whole lot less to run, it'll cost a whole lot less money to um, to get rid of our sludge that gets, gets trucked out to Lowell right now. Um, one person said it's kind of the consistency of chocolate milk right now. <laughs> we want to make it the consistency of like a milkshake, really thick, because we're spending all this money to get rid of water. Uh, instead, we can kind of condense that a lot more and spend a lot less to, you know, be getting rid of a lot less material, which in the, in the long run. It's about um, $100,000 a year that we spend to get rid of the sludge, which is just leftover um, when we have to waste uh, bugs, really, that do, do all that work. Um, another question that people brought up was, um, why can't septic users dispose for free at the plant? Um, the infrastructure is not there right now to allow that. I, I, personally, I'm open to look at that as, um, as a way to cut the cost for septic users in the town that, um, you know, when they have it pumped, when they, every couple of years or so, or three years, depending on how many kids live in the house and what you use there, um, you pump your septic tank out and then so there's a, a charge for say a Greg's to pump that out then there's also a, a smaller charge to, to dispose of it 
our plant doesn't have the capability and the infrastructure to take that right now. Um, so we're looking at, um, as an opportunity in this engineering or deciding, do we want to spend the money to put the infrastructure in to take it? Um, I was going to play a video, but maybe I won't because it's got some bad language in it. Uh, but if anybody's ever seen Christmas Vacation, where, where the, where the um, cousin pulls up in his RV and, you know, he, Chevy Chase is looking out the window and he sees, you know, this guy dumping the, the RV's full, so he's dumping it down the, down the manhole. Well, that's not how, you know, you just can't do that. So it's got to be a, a specific setup um, that you need to have specific access to it so nobody, you know, septic users from all over the area don't just pull up and start unloading. There's got to be it done at a specific time. A lot of areas have, you know, cards or a bar screen or something like that to let them in, but you have to have a a uh, specific holding tank that needs to be put in to take, to take that. You want to make sure it's tested before it goes into your system um, or at least drain out some of the large stuff before it goes in. So there's infrastructure that needs to get put in. It's not something you can just open a manhole and dump, but, um, but I, I think it, it is worth doing that, looking at that engineering and, and, uh, and uh, trying to alleviate some of the cost. The other option is to choose to just, you know, uh, give a credit for people, you know, if, if it's going to somewhere else and we can credit them for doing it. But it has to make sense that you don't want to spend money. You know, we're here we're asking taxpayers to fund this project. We don't want to, you know, spend money that, um, asking for more money to spend on something that wouldn't get utilized as much. So we really want to make sure it's done right and looked at both of those options. But I, I don't know if anyone else has um, an opinion I, on I, that. But. I, I have over and over again said that I am committed to try to figure out a way to do the, this um, to make it fair. Yeah. Um, but I just want to point out what Trevor's trying to say is the concentration is you know, is very high when you come in in one of those tanker trucks. So, you know, you can't just dump it into our, um, you know, uh, clarifier area because what happens is the bugs are get overwhelmed. So you, you have to have the infrastructure there to filter it through and, and, and you know, dilute, it, a dilute bit. it and, and make sure that, you know, the bugs are happy. So, um, to successfully process it. So, it, it is a little bit complicated, and so we have to figure out um, what kind, how, what, how large this issue is, how regularly this is going to happen, um, and then, you know, it, it, to be fair to the sewer users, you can't be having people just dump for nothing. I, I, I was thinking there would be no charge, but it would be very heavily discounted, maybe, um, because we'll there would be some, that. there should be some charge a little bit, but. I am. I have said right from the beginning that if this, if the entire town is supporting this renovation effort, then I would certainly support some kind of um, discount or, you know, no fee for the actual sludge um, disposal. So it wasn't part of the current plan, but um, definitely keeping our minds open and, and our wallets closed. We don't want to, you know, spend extra money. We don't have to, but we really want to take advantage of this if we can and um, provide a service to to the people that aren't on the, on the sewer users um, on, on the system. Um, there was a, a question about uh, Title V fees. Um, so uh, the, I think the question was um, why, do, why does we charge, you know, Deerfield charge a Title V fee? And I think that typically is when uh, property gets sold or, you know, transferred. Um, yes. And, and really that's a, a charge that goes to the Board of Health, not the sewer. Um, and, and really, you know, we have to cover our, our inspectors' time to do that stuff and make sure that they're, they're getting, um, you know, they're doing the right thing when they're following the law. So um, I'm not really sure where, where that question came from, but I, you know, wanted to try and answer that. Um, we have to pay our inspectors and, you know, and, and it goes to the Board of Health, not the sewer system. Um, there was a question about intermunicipality access to our system. Um, the, the question, I think, was are we, in, are we now or have been in the talks with other entities that aren't in town that want to get hooked up to our system. There's been uh, <coughs> nothing formal, but there's been discussions. I think the only thing I'm aware of is Covestro is a, is a uh, business in the Waitley Industrial Park, and they're looking to expand. They were interested in, in that expansion. Could they tie into our system? And I, I'm happy to, I mean, if we have the capacity, I'm happy to charge them. Uh, you know, to get some of that money and, and, and offset the cost to, to do our, our, you know, to run our plant. So there's nothing formal at the moment. Um, 
I'm always open to, to listen to opportunities to make it more, more affordable. Um, question, Jack? Can, can you, can you, can you wait, wait. Giving out sewage to the town of Wake. Yep. They don't pay taxes can to our sewage treatment plant. And since they, since they don't pay taxes, we can't give away when we have to pay for all the infrastructure. Jack, because could, they're not contributing anything. Jack, could you come up and just say, because I'd rather have everybody at home hear you, because um, it's really important. Do you want me to talk in microphone? Uh, either one, sure, wherever is, wherever is comfortable for you. Just state your name and just, you know, what your questions are. And... I don't have a question. I have a comment about giving the town of Deerfield away to the town of Waitley. Yeah, I hear you. For years, they've always asked us to put the EMS department down there. Yep. So that way they'd have an excuse to push the road through. They want to push the road through, why? Because you're going from a town road to a private development. Correct. And they think it's okay to do that. And then the next thing after they do that, then they want us to push the sewer through to them. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is they don't contribute to any of our taxes, but they always want everything from the town of Deerfield. Well, that's why you would, you would make it affordable, right? I mean, you would tell, you we, would make it, uh, you would charge them enough so that it, would, that it would be in fact, yes, we're paying, they're paying heavily the, to get into our what system. What the policy was for the water district was if they charge X amount of dollars, they would triple the rate to pay for it. Fine. When I was on the board, we had people who wanted to give it to them and yeah. just give it to them. Not interested in and that And we at can't all. do that. No way. Nope. You got to make it beneficial Absolutely. and equitable for the taxpayers in Deerfield. Absolutely, right. that's my yep. only thing. Yep, I We're appreciate that. We're just looking at it as additional users, John, to help the cost burden. Yes, and I agree with you. Making making it affordable, right? They don't pay tax, so it needs that rate would need to be substantial enough to cover cover that. Yep, perfect. That's it. That's great. Yeah, Thank and you. the thing that Whether I was concerned be about before, uh, because I was part when the originally when it was Bear Corp wanted to hitch up was to make sure that we didn't limit our ability to expand our system to service mm -hmm. them. Right. That's right. Because, you know, right now we don't have service all on 5 and 10 mm -hmm. where it could be very beneficial to the town for growth. Yep. Uh, there's a number of properties up there have been sold uh, for sale, but they can't sell them because they don't have a source system. So it's, uh, we want to make sure we don't stagnate Deerfield mm -hmm. for somebody else's benefit. Yep. Great point. I agree. Great point. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Jeff, come on up. I think the uh, majority of the people in town understand that this is not uh, an easy project with easy solutions. It's going to be pretty complicated and it's going to take some time and some planning once again. Yes. And uh, some of that, obviously, we're a little short on time. But, you know, we talk about extending sewer lines, you know, five and ten for businesses and so on and so forth. I hope we take the time to really study that and see if it's cost effective. Right. There's a lot of property out on five and 10 that you just can't develop. Right. It's it too wet. The bottom line is, so you really have to cost effective. Yep. And then even in town, uh, you know, right now we're about one third with sewer users and about two thirds uh, septic. And even extending lines, once again, I hope we take the time to see if it's cost effective. Right. And, you know, how many new services are you going to pick up? It's not just the installation, but once Long we install term. it, it's the maintenance, too. And we keep forgetting about that in That's this the town. biggest thing. It's the maintenance. Uh, I really do hope that we take the time and we look at it. If we're talking about roughly 19 million, maybe a little less, mm -hmm. that some way, shape, and form, we can pretty much guarantee these septic users that we will take the time and, and design a system where they can dispose of the waste pumped from their tanks. Mm -hmm. You've got basically two-thirds of the town looking at that. Yeah. And, and you know, nice. I, I realize it might be 
you know, once again, uh, a planning and yeah. right. And so again, right. cost effective. But I know I pump my tank a couple times once every two, three years. Yeah. And I know my last uh, disposable fee was $150. Yeah. So uh, once again, if people are paying 25% as far as septic users, yeah. I'm sure they're going to be looking for a little something. Yeah, I, th I agree with that. And, and I, I, agree. I would be very careful as far as Waitley, and I have nothing against Waitley, great mm -hmm. town and everything, but if, if all of a sudden you're telling septic users, well, we don't have a system right. so you can dispose, but we're going to allow Waitley to dispose yeah. their yeah. sewer, uh, I think people would be pretty upset. So I it just has to be, I hope has to people be money take worth. time yeah. in the planning process and are aware of some of these issues of so, so you don't get yourself in a bind. That's right. all. No, it's a good point. And I do, I think, you know, it will talk, uh, obviously it would cost more money to set up that infrastructure to be able to take it there, mm -hmm. but I think for whatever that cost is, um, you know, if we make that investment in it, it's a long-term payback where people for, you know, for, for many, many years can take a little bit off their bill uh, when, when they, um, when they right. have to it, it will be long-term. This whole yeah. project's going to be long-term. Yeah. Well, so we, you know, the benefit would pay off in right. the long run. It just seems like and, it makes sense to do right. that. And I think everybody's got to understand that it's going to cost everybody a little something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jeff, um, while you're here, how do you want to um, handle this from a capital improvement committee? Do you want to um, have like a separate meeting on this? Um, well, I, I I think we better just mm -hmm. okay. just because of the way the bylaws written. Yeah. In that, so I, I think we'd be better off doing that. I know. Uh, I'm not too sure. I haven't. I don't know if all the members have been appointed yet. That's all. Okay. So, I, I think we so do, you might want to check check on yeah. that. But mm -hmm. once once that happens, well, and we, we have, have the members appointed, we have, a, we have a quorum. I know. Right. That. Then we probably should have a yeah. meeting to at least discuss this right. and try to figure out where. Well, I, I, where I the it, capital improvement committee fits did in. Did we we had it on the? Did we have it or did we yes, take it off no, last? No, it, it's on there. It's but, on there, right? But oh, it's yeah. very vague. It is. And and what everyone is so nervous about is is a process. So right. I, I think. One of the things that we can address the process is to go to the capital improvement committee to, to un, so that the committee understands what we're trying to do. Right. And we can make a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and as and, far as the funding and when it'll hit and what we need. Yeah. When. Exactly. And, and, yeah, exactly. And how we're how we're going out to bid on this and right. all kinds. I think, I think that's I, what makes people nervous. Right. But we I think have it's to very important for all the com committees yeah. that are going to be involved with this. Uh, that they are at least aware of the game plan. Mm -hmm. And as you said, I think the process is very important. Uh, so there's no question as far as did we do the proper procedures right. or not. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. That's good. Thank you. Thank Jeff. you. Yeah. Um, yep. Another question. Oh, sure. Hey, Darren, sure. Come on up. Hi, I'm Darren Gray. Um, a couple questions on the discussion here. I liked seeing in the information sheet the language can only be spent on the sewer plant. Yes. Now, already here we're just having casual discussions and information session, this talk of, just the you know, nebulous talk of five and 10 or extending of it course. or additional things in the sewer plant. None, none of that's so, part of this project. How is that um, formalized? How is it formalized? I, I, I picture if it says just for the sewer plant, that's just on that parcel is what I would picture. But how is that formalized? Oh, well, it also includes some of the piping because what, you know, like last year when we had so much rain, mm -hmm. we had infiltration and, and, and there was a no, huge that, amount. No, let me fix that a little bit. Okay. So um, this project, the one we're getting a grant for, does not have the I&I &I work that needs to get done included in it. Um, it ha and everything that we're planning on right now for this ask and this project is at that plant. And so everything that we would spend, uh, like we talked about earlier, getting a community together to, you know, to review all of that stuff would be um, just on that plant. So the talk about going up five and 10 and expanding, the, all of that is I down the road. some pipe. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So we had juggled around the different phases as we went through assessing, right. you know, what we were going to tackle and 
you know, originally, originally the phases were set up that, that we would do like a small part at that plant and another, and then we'd move up and do the, I mean, the, the major stuff at the South Deerfield plant, then move up and do the major stuff at the Old Deerfield plant and sprinkled in between would be I and I work each year. And then um, we'd come back and finish up the stuff here and then go back and finish up the stuff there. And through kind of discussion, we talked, to, and that's why we went for the $13 million grant and that was down just for that first phase oh, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. plant. Okay. Yeah. And then so uh, in talking with Finance Committee and just people as we're going through this process, we felt like, well, if they're already going to be there, it's cheaper to just get everything done at that plant first. And that way, whatever we do with Old Deerfield, we could accept that. Um, we could accept that load from there. So I think that's, um, that's kind of the process right now. There is another, I mean, there's another whole part of our town that needs sewer work. And, almost as bad, probably, I mean, I think if you talk to the operator, it's in worse shape, um, but it's not as big of a workhorse as this one is, and we really need to address this one first. So a lot of that stuff is down the road and still okay. is kind of nebulous. It needs to be addressed, and what, yeah, what so we're going to do. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering do, is, um, it is. you know, because then you get a big budget, and I, I hope we can get it done for, you know, maybe yes. a quarter to a third less. I, of course, you know, of course. The town's going to run such a great project, right? Yes. But how, how, when there's that extra money sitting there, do we avoid that project creep? Yeah. Is there going to be something written into... I don't know, some document somewhere? Or well, how will that be there's controlled? not going to be extra money, so to speak, because the processes are going out to bid. We're, we're asking for the allowance to spend up to $19 million. Okay. It's not like we're getting a check for $19 million like the school gets and then just dish it out where, and whatever's left, we're fat, dumb, and happy. It's not going to happen that way. We just don't spend it, and it's, it's you know, so... But your, I think your concern is that we have that capability. What would stop us from sewing? Yeah, because well, hey, we got that ceiling. Yeah. Let's you're go. probably going to carry a 20 percent contingency or something. Yes, yeah, right. Right? So, yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. right, right, exactly. So I think you know, and that was we talked I think earlier today about this, and and I foresee and have always foreseen a um, a steering committee such as it's labeled to um, to kind of vet some of that stuff, and and you know we still need to finish up the assessment. Um, because that assessment's in draft form because we really haven't figured out what we're actually gonna do here. Um, and I think, you know, my idea was to secure this funding, secure the ability from the town, um, address that uh, draft, decide exactly what we're gonna do um, so that we can, we can start tackling, narrowing this budget down a little bit more. Okay, we're not gonna do all the windows in the building and no, we're not gonna change the stairs. Or, you know, there's a lot in that assessment that you know that has been accounted for and but doesn't really you know may not be done i mean the most important things to me are headworks aeration clarifier chlorine you know sludge that kind of stuff is you know it probably is the bulk of the bill but there are areas in that thing that you know if the windows waited another phase or some other time you know things like that don't have to be i don't think maybe i'm wrong about that but all have to get grouped in it at the first you know go round, i think um okay so I'd love, I'd love a committee to look at that stuff and steer this. You know, I, that's why I envisioned the sewer study committee, if it was together still, just to kind of guide this stuff forward. And, and um, you know, we can't, uh, I can't make all those decisions. We can't, we don't have that technical, you know. I mean, I, I brushed up pretty well, but I'm no engineer. So I think um, we need some expertise to look at this and other people with better finance minds to look at this. And, we also want to break it out so that anything that can be, um, another grant opportunity can be resiliency uh, you yeah. know like the MVP program certainly we could do the tanks over and inc increase the height of the um, you know the tank height to make it more resilient and oh by the way you're rehabbing the whole tank as at the same time so you know that that can be separated out in the in the long run that's not a huge amount of money but you know that's less that has to be paid for by um, you know the sewer users and the Town. Can I keep going? Oh, please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. some things yeah. I wanted to ask about anyway. So yeah. mm -hmm. the grant money and maybe yes. other grant money if we're yes. fortunate enough. Yes. So that comes off the top of the $19 million. Yes. Right? That all brings that number down. That's correct. And it sounds yeah. like there's a decent chance of getting two to three from what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. 2.6 two, two, 2. is what I've heard. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm hoping to see that when I go vote, sign. We're going to vote tonight to allow him to sign. And, and then we should have the final numbers for next week. And that, would be a, down. that would be a commitment. <laughs> uh, right, exactly. And that would be a commitment. And I think um, 
from what I understand, we have five years to kind of implement and spend down that money, um, whatever you know, grant we'll get, which I think is going to be the 13, the grant will be for the 13 million for that first phase. Okay. Um, the new combined first phase. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you mentioned one of my biggest, I guess, concerns, like I work in project management. I am an, I'm a civil engineer, but I don't do sewer treatment plants. Yep. I understand how they work, but I don't sure. design them, right? Yep. Um, but I mentioned to you earlier, one of my bigger concerns about this whole thing, well, the 19 million and how do we value engineer that down? How yep. do we really control that number? Um, but also the structure, right? What's the structure going to be to control the project throughout design and construction? So yep. not just for change orders during construction, but you know, when the engineer is proposing some things and there should be some entity to test that. Or maybe you bring right. in some electrical contract and say, hey, how would you do this? Right. You know, it's like, what, what are the, what's the, it sounds like you mentioning a steering committee. Um, yeah, we, I do. I, I, I would love to put a committee together to, to look at that stuff and help us through this project because it is large and there's a lot of, you know, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, all, all that stuff in, involved. Um, and we also do have, you know, USDA, their engineers are looking at this as well to make sure that, you know, what we're laying out there is, is accurate, it's not overinflated, they're, you know, it's their money as well, so they want to make sure that, you know, I had talked to a retire engineer from USDA and they, they had said, look, we deny projects all the time because the engineering is out to lunch. Um, they're trying to, you know, towns are trying to pull off something that just doesn't need to be done or it's a waste, so um, it's nice to have that you know, that secondary eyes on it, but, but I agree, there does need to be another committee to look at this stuff and say, you know, with some expertise in the field, you know, maybe not that, but I mean, we, we obviously we have an engineering firm when we pick, um, would be, you know, looking out for our best interest as well as theirs, I get that, um, but, you know, they want a long-term relationship and then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really, cons you know, I really want people, you know, in town that have some benefit, you know, some knowledge here to help us with this. Okay, that's good. I mean, obviously, very value-based community, and absolutely, want to get every bit we can for our dollar here. We've so. got a lot more work to do after this, right. so it's yeah, a lot of good things coming down the line. Yes. once we get through this successfully. Yeah. Um, yep. One more. Sure. No, no. Uh, Please. We mentioned operational savings. I was talking to to Tony, the engineer, earlier about you know the electrical savings potential here. You mentioned yeah. the sludge. How we'd probably reduce that line item by maybe even a half if things right. went superbly, right? Exactly. So. Yep. I don't know, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say we yeah. cut 100 grand operational from the, the bucket of money for the sewer treatment plant every right. year. So what ha they will have operational savings, so how would we uh, process that money? Like where would it go? How would we handle that as a town? So, so I think operationally we look at that you know, budget every year, what it's going to take to run that plant, and then we, would, you know, we set our user, user rates. So we, we figured our rates on, you know, I assume, not on the operational savings. I'm hoping not, because <laughs> I'd love to. Be I'd love to benefit that in the long run. So, um, so yes, we would look at those rates, and if we can, you know, if we can bring the rates down or pay the loan off sooner, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we we study that every you know, six months, right, and look at the rates. So, we would look at that rate and say, you know, once we get this completed and we see that we're we're, we're saving, you know, we're not spending nine hundred thousand, we're spending eight hundred thousand a year, or um, you know, not a million nine hundred. Um, you know, that that would be reflected in the rates. You know, really, um, and then also. Um, the select board and finance committee that reviews that, or just select, just the sewer commissioners, which is the select board that set the rates. We set the rates with with a public hearing. Yeah, okay, so then like, if there's a saving, yes. if, the, if the budget's coming down, that goes into the rates consideration, and that would tra could translate. We have to we have a public soon. hearing. Yes, exactly. We so have a public you know, I think there's a real opportunity there. You know? I do too. That's yeah. it's a great and, point. And you know, well, there's also, also the opportunity to start funding that enterprise fund a little bit better than it had in the past, mm -hmm. so that we're projecting out for future expenditures and putting that money aside now and not waiting for a major crisis and then trying to come up with all that money. Right. So like I said, that would be determined in those, like, biannual... Yes. But there's also, I mean, we're a green community, so, you know, we could, obviously, you would want to, you know, there should be solar down there. And I was wondering that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There should be all kinds of stuff. So, you know, and that, and that would be another grant opportunity. Okay. So, I mean, Thank the you. whole idea is to be, is to go out and hustle as many dollars as we can towards a project. So it'd be a long term. I mean, we're, we're doing a 40 year loan. So you really want to rehab this plant on a 40 year kind of vision. And so we, you know, try to, we, we want to look at how, how we're doing stuff. And, and, and if you're replacing a part that has a lifespan of five years, that's not really what we want to finance. We want to finance something that is more long term. So, and that that's where the rate 
is going to, you know, it will give us hopefully some enough savings that we'll have some um, ability to change the rates and reflect, um, re, you know, life life cycle of things. Sure. So better we, capital plan with that money. Right. Then. So right. if we know we have to do a part replacement in five years, we can put that money aside, or you know, we'll have some options, which is what we don't have right now. Okay. And we want to make sure we're building a plant that if at some point in time we do want to expand the system, the plant's going to be capable of handling it. Mm. Well, you know, if we're, you know, having 500,000 gallons going through a day right now, you know, and say the plant's capable, of, I don't know, 800,000 to a million, we want to make sure that, you know, as we're, we have to keep it in the back of our mind. You know, if we expand to a lot of the town that's feasible, five and 10, that that plant will be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, those of us have been around here for, since Moby Dick was a minnow, uh, knew when Oxford Pickle was here, we couldn't add anybody to the system because it was beyond capacity. Yep. So we wanna make sure that, you know, we're thinking about that at the same time. Sure, an important consideration, but yeah. we also don't want to overbuild, of course. That's no, right. no, of course. Yeah, no, we sense. don't need a Taj Mahal. No, nope, we don't. We need a Thank functioning <laughs> sewer plant. Okay. Nobody wants we'll to pay. tapping yeah. you for some so. help, hopefully. Mm. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Mm. Sure. Is this public comment? Yes. It, it seems like it's involved into public comment. So um, do you have a comment, Ava? Please come up. I wasn't completely done with my list, but I'd rather take your questions. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's most important. Welcome. Hi. Um, well, this is a comment, not a question. Oh, is that okay. all right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to read it. Well, did you have any questions though from your tour down there? Was it informational? Oh, the tour was fantastic. Distilled um, water. The tour was really great. I um, it it. For me, it's so amazing to not just see this in the abstract, but to actually experience it. And uh, actually, seeing the, what's that last thing? The, circular, the, the, the clarifier? Oh, the clarifier and the broken arm, and it was just amazing to see. And it actually was scary for me to see how much stuff could and has, who knows, are we, we're on public here going into the Connecticut River. This is like, it was like, oh my God, we have got to do something now. So, mm -hmm. yes, the tour was wonderful. Thank you Good. for arranging that. Sure. So my name is Ava Gibbs. I live at 617 River Road. My husband and I have a septic system. When we bought the place, we had a cesspool. Our septic system cost us over $20,000. And last year, some of you may have heard me rant and rave about refusing to pay 25% of the sewer district's costs. I was strongly against it. Why should I pay a penny towards the sewer district that had been underpaying for decades and they didn't put aside any reserve toward repair? Forget about it. I'm from New York. Just forget about it. So. Why have I converted to working hard for this sewer project this year? So here are my reasons. Okay. One, I don't want raw sewage spilling into the Connecticut River. I love our earth, this is our environment, and I don't wanna see more pollution spoiling it. Two, I don't wanna pay my share of fines for a bad sewer system and then also have to pay my share in, in taxes for a hurriedly repaired plant because the state or the feds made us do it quickly. So we're gonna have to pay for this whatever. I figured, well, I don't wanna do it twice with fines and a bad, and a bad system that will have to be done too quickly because they'll force us. Number three. I finally accepted that that is the law in our town. The sewer users pay 75%, the septic users pay 25%. Number four, I realize that I don't squawk about paying my share of taxes for our schools, our police department, our library, 
because I recognize that they are all our shared community services and they all need a functioning sewer system. So I live in a community, which means we hold things in common. Number five, when I looked at the actual dollar figures for my 25%, they were really not that high at all. For example, paying $8 a month was reasonable for me. And number six, I really trust, and this is a key word for me because I'm not gonna follow every little thing and I never really followed it that well. I'm not gonna follow this in the future. I'm not gonna come to all these meetings and know all the engineering stuff and everything. But I really trust that this select board, our select board, along with any other advisors, will continue to do two things about the sewer project. So this is what I trust, that they will continue to be open and transparent about the whole process as they have been, and I know they will continue. And I trust that they will continue to reduce costs as much as possible and yet end up with a good rehabilitating, rehabilitated functioning system. Given all the above reasons for my conversion, I am willing to work hard toward a yes vote on September 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. Oh, Ava, that's really Thank nice. You. Thank you. Thank you. you want this on the record? Sure. That would be wonderful, yeah. yes. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Ava, thank you. That was very nice. No pictures? No, no, no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. Oh, please. Or AV Tech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lily Dwight of 45 South Mill River Road. And you said something this evening that I did not realize um, that I want to make sure I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. So for years, when the sewer payers and at the end of the year, if there's an overage in the system, that money has gone into the town coffers? No. I, Is that right? They used to maintain a separate fund for the sewer system. We used to fund in advance, one full year of operation in advance. Yes. We'd have to be uh, and $700,000 at the beginning of the year, which would last us most of the year. And we loan that money over the year. We just keep having work done on it. But no, nobody gets credit for it. Okay. So, oh, maybe I was yeah. mis maybe I was misunderstood. Well, no, that no. If there was an overage at the end of the year, right. it would go to the general fund. No, but no, 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 no. not in this case. This was an exception to the rule. Was it all years? All, all the years? It was always saved and it was always kept in reserve. All right. That, that was a sewer reserve. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that yeah. thanks for clarifying that. I was going to say they've been paying. Well, the more, rates were reflective. Yeah. Whatever the operational budget was, you tried to make the rates as close to the operational the budget. The actual cost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, Thank if you there was a, that, if account. there was something to be fixed, it was additional funding, but mostly the rates were reflective of the real operational costs. Which is why we don't have the money. Um, Eric. Eric, come on up. So Eric Brown, um, Eric Brown. So I do agree that I think the, the select board is trying to be open and transparent about what's going on um, to some extent. Uh, my question is, which, which goes along with Ava saying, um, Darren had asked a question in regards to the, or, or you had mentioned in regards to the sewer study, the, 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 the report that was done is still in draft form. Can you yes. explain again why that was? Why it's in draft form? Yeah. Because he won't complete it until we decide what we want to do. So the whole idea is to, I mean, the assessment is done, mm -hmm. but, but the idea is to, um, if we're going to go forward with the project, he wanted to discuss with the town what, what we want to, what we want, what, what avenue we want to take. So the assessment is done, so the yes. report is done. Yes. So he's finalized that. 
So because I would assume you'd use that finalized report to do your to do to figure out what you wanted to fix, right? And he's been he's been paid in full for that as well. Uh, I think so. So yeah. we should have a finalized report if he's been paid in full, correct? Well, uh, I, the the report is done, but it doesn't really. Uh, the town hasn't decided what they're going to actually do oh, yet. Oh, sure, so. sure. But the report would be done because you're going to use that report to to finalize what you're going to do. Well, we, yeah, the, all the information is there, mm -hmm. but we have. Uh, it's not in um, it's not in finalized form because we haven't finalized what we're going to do, right? You, so how are you going to? But you but the reason they were hired and, yeah. and this is this is why I say and you mentioned you're not engineers this is not your, your forte right they were hired to, to do an analysis and you were going to take that analysis after it was yeah. finished right and then you decide what you're going to do correct. which is the correct way to do it yeah. but no one's held him accountable to finish that report. Well, I mean, other than putting draft and finalize on it, I'm not sure what else, what other information you expect to get in it. Uh, the, the final report, once you take draft off, it's, it's an actual official document. So, but it's not aside, official. No. Aside from draft, it's complete. Well, you'd have to ask him that. He's the one who has to take draft. I have the asked watermark. him. Right. And so he said, well, I would like to talk and sit with the town and decide, you know, are you guys going to move forward? Are you going to tackle this part or that part? Because the part of the assessment was how we're going to tackle the project. It was designed to be done in four stages, right? Oh, no. and, and the town is deciding wishwashing back and forth. Are we going to do all of phase one there? Are we going to do all phase two there? You know, so that's how I think that's I, I, I the finalized that, that he wants we to do. We understand that there's a second phase, but the report needs to be finalized. The reason I'm going with this is because that needs to be finished. If you've paid him in full, mm -hmm. this is how this process works. Yeah. Darren, you had mentioned to Darren there's going to be a steering committee because, again, you said you're looking for expertise. Um, who's that can consist of how many people? We haven't set that up yet. So okay, um, why not? Because it's not we're not we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done anything yet. So we're waiting. Well, we don't have well, any money. You're asking for the money, but I would assume that that, that would be in place beforehand. No, right? it's not. Well, but why? Because we're, we don't have any money yet. I mean, once we get approval, Eric, we're going to put all this together and get moving. So, but I don't, have, I don't have any money. I don't so, have any way so to do So there's actually no commitment. Is there a commitment that that's what you're going to do? I shouldn't say that's, you have that's the my intention, together, but yes. do we have a written commitment or do we have something that the tax? See, I think everyone thinks that I don't want this thing done. And I do. Let's just face it. We're looking at an, uh, uh, an aerator down there that was, that was outdated 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We all understand there's an issue. But... The, what we're seeing is we don't have a process in place to organize this money. And I'm not saying we have to have the people in place, but there should be a process. Well, I think a lot of the, you know, what I was hoping is the sewer study committee was going to stay together and that once we got this going, we would sit together and get this done. But everybody kind of picked up and left and went home. Why was that? Because, well, the chairman, the chairman quit. Um, another prominent person had quit. And everybody just stopped doing their work. So, and and because, this, because the sewer study committee took this over and decided this, the sewer commissioners took it over because we weren't at the table the whole time. And when you had the chairman of the board leave and other people leave before that, we decided we needed to get involved so we knew what was going on. And I thought that committee would stay together. I hope it will constitute again and act as a steering committee to move this forward. So I was one of those people that left. We, we never had anything to do as much as we tried. We tried to insert ourselves into the process and yep. we were ignored. Um, uh, so, I don't think you were ignored. Oh, I, I have all the emails where you were going to call me back and you never did. Yeah, because I didn't have anything to give you at you the time. You actually said, I'll call you to discuss, and yep. you didn't call. Well, we, we discussed yeah. many things, Eric, so don't talk when like I, I never you. called you back. You never did. I called you. I, I, I'm I not getting well, into this right now. This is, yeah. you know, you're hey, devolving um, the conversation, okay. Eric. Which, the point being is okay. we're looking for a process. Can yeah. you guys commit to a process of how you're going to organize this because like you said, yes, we will. Because we've already not paid in full for a report that's not finished, that should have been finished in August of last year, per contract, whether or not it was under, whether or not it was supposed to be or not. I don't know if it has been. Uh, because they didn't think they should have. They signed that contract. Whether they signed it after August or not, that just shows that they, they, should, they, they didn't read their contract. Th this is what we're worried about. We're, we're talking about $19 million capital improvements process and program without the expertise to manage it from cradle to grave. And that's, what, that, that's, that's where our concern is for the people that are voting no. It's not that we don't think it needs to get done. We all agree that. Yes, but, but you're, you're voting no, and you're going to lose a $2.6 million grant because you don't have the exact process in place? Well, and and you're, they're never coming back, Eric, to give you the money. We can put that group together. I understand you're trying to scare us about the two six. million. I'm not point. scaring you at all. So, I've been so, told. So, okay, so let's talk about the dollars. Eric, Eric, just a second. Mm. If you, if we had voted yes in June, mm. 
okay? We would have started putting our group together with hopes that we could pull in the USDA grant. It looks like the grant is going to be able to be signed next week, okay? If we vote yes in September 9th, we will be putting this group together after September 9th because then we will have the uh, we the town will have the opportunity to say yes we have we have money and we can try to put the process together we we you can't put the process together without having approval of money but you could have because you didn't have to have money to, to have that committee meet but the, but you said you didn't want you you had nothing to do there is nothing to we, do until we, we have the approval of the money that is wrong we could have helped you guys you said you you picked and choose to come up with that 19 million dollars you're thinking about this you're thinking about that that's how you came up with that 19 million dollars is the full boat you may not do it you said that you, when darren was up here speaking you said you may not do this or you may not do that that, that committee could have helped you with that ahead of time. Yes, but that come committee up with a better disappeared, Eric. Because you, had, you wouldn't utilize this ahead of time. No, you like had to have it right then. And I'm like, I'm not ready yet. We weren't ready to give you tasks. And then everybody just split. Because and I'm we, not going to continue this conversation here that's tonight. That's right. I have another question. Okay. Okay. I have yeah, another yeah, question. Can I just interject sure. a little bit right now? As a board, we haven't been perfect. Okay? Uh... There isn't anybody in the room that's been perfect. What I'm saying right now is, let's not live with the past. Right. You know, I had a very good conversation with you, I thought, Eric. Yep. Um, let's look to the future. We've got a lot of expertise in this town that we can utilize. Let's make sure, you know, I don't know who they are. I know you, um, and I know a few other people. Darren. But, um, well, I, I don't know them personally. So right. it, it's just, you know. I'm we just, can vouch for dinner. Okay, but I'm just saying that th these are the members that I want to get on the committee. You know, I have construction background, but I'm not an engineer. I'm a plastics engineer. We're not making blown film down there, so, you know, I'm not going to be any help. So, but, you know, let's not live in the past and some of the mistakes that we made in the past. Let's look right now and move forward and make sure we're doing it the right way. Sure. And what I'm asking is have you and other people help us move forward. So, so looking forward, what is the process that this is gonna be done in? How many, you know, do we have, are we gonna put this out for bid? Are we gonna have a certain steering committee that's gonna be in charge of this, checks and balances? Can you guys commit to that and can we see that process within the next 20 days before we vote? That's all it takes to get a yes vote for me is to put that process down on paper and commit to it. Post it on the website. That's, all, that's really all I'm looking for, guys. I, I, would, I would think, personally, that within 20 days, we could get a steering committee put together. We no, can ask, I'm you not know, asking for right a steering now this committee. is a public forum. We can ask for volunteers to come forward and say, can you help us? I think you guys are mis misunderstanding me. I'm not asking for the committee to be formed. I'm asking for you guys to write out the process and commit to the process. Yep. Yep. We're going to form a committee. That committee is going to interview three, a minimum of three different engineers with an RFP process for bidding the engineering work. Then it's going to be evaluated by that committee on a scoring process based on X, Y, Z. That, that's what we're looking for. So, so we're doing our due diligence. And maybe David Prickett's the best engineer and has the best proposal. Maybe it's someone else that's more beneficial to the town. That's what, we're, that's what I'm looking for anyway. I'm looking for you guys to commit to that within the next 20 days. And you got my yes vote. That's, that's really all it boils down to. That's, I guess that, that was it. I won't ask Thank you, you any other questions. Okay. Thank you, Eric. And here again, like I said in the last meeting, the only way we can be constructive in anything that we do in this town is we've got to listen to both sides of the story. We can't listen to just one side. We have varying viewpoints, and they're going to come together at some point in time what makes it the best for the town. And that's what we're, I'm striving for anyways, mm -hmm. and I believe the other board members are. Uh, Bruce Hunter, Sand Gully Road, 103 Sand Gully Road North. Um, I submitted some questions to the select board on August 14th um, through an email to the town. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Bruce, I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll give you copies you copy? tonight. That'd be great. Um, one of my big con major concerns was why do we need the debt exclusion? Hmm. And I know that the sewer enterprise fund cannot borrow on their own. So the town now has to borrow the $19 million. Mm -hmm. The town is gonna sign a 
commitment letter and loan agreement with USDA. We hope. You hope. So you, you said Thursday you'd be signing a commitment letter. What does that mean? So USDA is putting together a packet for us, uh, hopefully on the 27th, uh, for us to review. And this is the work that David's been working on with USDA um, to secure a grant and a loan for the $13 million first Thir phase one project. $13 million. $13 million. yep. Um, has, have you reviewed the requirements of a USDA rural development loan for water and wastewater treatment? Has the board done it and has the so town our engineer, council? Our engineer has, no. as soon as we get, as soon as we get it from uh, USDA, because I haven't received anything from USDA yet, if you we're going to send it to town there's, council. There's 38 pages of what it, the process is yep. and what the town's responsible for. Right. And I think you, somebody needs to read that and involve the town accountant right town we, council yes we are yes lisa's we've already that. made a phone call to lisa okay She's, but there is a lot of things that yes, need to be prepared yep. yep they've been preparing a ton already and this is town. over and above, over and this, above. Is, okay. this is over and above and yep. what is the additional cost going to be to the town to secure this loan Meaning. legal fees audit fees management fees yeah. um, well have, have we ever thought about that yes uh, Yes. Okay, so you, we have some I idea mean, what they might We already know be. every time we have a contract, we have Lisa look at it. So oh. obviously we have some legal fees. There's a specific audit for federal funds yes. yep. that is very expensive, mm -hmm. over and above the town's annual audit. Right. So that hasn't been accounted for. No, we have not accounted have, for any of that okay. stuff yet. But right. you no, will account for it yes. in the next year's budget. Correct. Then okay. I have to. Um, because the funding source... Um, is the funding source required the debt exclusion for us to obtain the USDA loan? No. I okay, don't that was required. that was stated several times. The reason for the debt exclusion. So um, we can't accept the loan. Well, I guess it's a chicken and egg. So the way we set up the article at annual town meeting is that that um, we needed a debt exclusion for this, but. If we chose not to do that debt exclusion and we voted at the annual town meeting, I think we could have just gotten a loan. But I think the way we set it up is that, th that we wanted to debt exclude this project. So without, without getting approval, that means if we don't get the debt exclusion, we don't have approval, we'd have to go to annual town meeting again. So USDA is requiring us to do a debt exclusion. I don't no. believe so. No, no, no. no the no. article, the They're way the article is written, as you remember, Bruce, the finance committee and everybody did not feel that town meeting to take the vote of a town meeting was good enough. We had to have a, a town ballot. A debt exclusion ballot. A debt exclusion ballot. I understand that was a, that was a majority that was a vote discussion. of the finance committee yeah. yes. in the selectmen. Yeah, yes. But it wasn't everybody's opinion. Well, it was uh, consensus. I'm just saying that 25% of the total cost of this project very well might not have had to been debt excluded for the residents of the town of Deerfield. You mean only, only because the debt exclusion vote is required now because the enterprise fund cannot borrow money. That's right. No. But that 25% might have involved a two and a half override. No. no? It's, it's did you $8 a month. <laughs> well, I just wanted, so, yeah, so the USDA didn't require the debt exclusion, but I think what Trevor's saying is because we made the town meeting vote contingent on a debt exclusion, mm -hmm. USDA does not view it as a positive vote. Okay. So USDA wants to see a positive vote from the town, mm -hmm. and now the only vote we have is a negative vote because the debt exclusion has failed. Okay. If the debt exclusion passes, then we will have an affirmative vote. If it fails, we will still have a negative vote vote then if the town still wanted to accept USDA and that was still on the table we'd have to go back to town meeting and get another vote and we could do it without a debt exclusion right. okay so if it does fail again we can go back to a special town meeting and do it without a debt exclusion correct okay so that is an option that is an option just yes. want to make clear that everybody yes, yes. understands Thank you. that voting the debt exclusion down is an option you would have to do short-term borrowing for the sewer enterprise and also short-term borrowing for the t town residents. My concern is that the town is borrowing all this money, mm -hmm. not the sewer users. They have no obligation to repay this. Yeah. I don't and that's my concern. But how, do you, how would you structure it otherwise? I, I'm, not, right. I'm, I'm not here. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. yeah. 
But you've obviously thought about it, so that's Well, I've thought question. about it. There's, I mean, we have residents in the town that will not be paying one penny. Because this, they don't pay taxes. Because they don't pay taxes. Right. So we need to come up with a new system mm -hmm. that allows all the residents of the Deerfield to pay their portion of 25%. Yes. The old Deerfield Water District did that to, for their capital improvements, and they prepared an EDU or EUR system, yep. and all the residents paid, the nonprofits included. Right, and I remember you guys were talking we about that a lot. We had talked a lot about it. There were several options prepared a year and a half ago. Yeah, do you know why that didn't? Yeah, because um, nobody wanted to do it. Um, I'm concerned that the $19 million does not include any part of the town's infrastructure. The I&I &I stuff? The I&I. &I. Right. With, I understand that the flatness of the sewer requires a significant amount of water to pass the flow to the treatment plant. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're currently um, treating just water. Right. Yep. Not waste. Not waste. Yep. And that's part of our problem. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to address that yet. Yet, but right. I mean, but well, if we, we do could, address it, we could. We might. The, the strength of the of the affluent might be too strong. Well, it's a, so yeah, that's an engineering that's an issue. Yes, it is. Yep. But I agree. You know, I mean, we could decide maybe instead of doing everything at the plant, we do the major needs like the three, you know, thirteen million, and then start the process of that I and I work that needs to happen. Just want to hit a couple other points. Um, Bruce, there's the, also the possibility from the plant savings. That you could do I and I from the you know the rates um, that would generate money well, on a regular I basis. Enough, but I, yeah. I initially wrote my first thing I wanted to say tonight, and I'm, and I think I guess at this point I probably will say it. Okay. The primary need for the proposed headworks project mm -hmm. and associated work due to the inability of the sewer users from flushing items into the sewer system that should not be disposed in this manner. Right. Yep. We're not addressing that issue. Right. Mm -hmm. All we're doing is paying one to two million dollars to address it. Right. We're not resolving the issue. And, and it's gonna continue. We need to look at that, that somehow. Was a, that was a question that, um, we, that... That the David Prickett has looked at every manhole in this town. He knows where the, inf where, where the issues are. Yeah. It should have been part of the report to you. You should be addressing this issue by fines yeah. or some other method. Um, so the, the payment payback period of 40 years, um, that'll be set on a monthly basis. That's my understanding. And it will be paid back over the 40 years. You'll be paying a, a consistent amount every month. Or annually. Yeah, or, I, or annually, however it's yeah. worked. I think what we were the two issues. The two issues I have with that is the sewer rate and the tax rate are, are determined at different times of the year. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to anticipate payments mm -hmm. and tax rate. I think it's going to be a nightmare for the for the, for the town account <laughs> yeah, and I, town I'd collector. I have to agree with that. This system is not the way to go about and do it. We need to be paying for this somehow through a consistent one pay isolated system of payments, mm -hmm. maybe EDU system that, that can be tracked and can be looked at on a monthly basis. An audit is required a yearly basis. Um, I, USDA, have, we, have, we have never received a USDA loan as right. far as I know. No, I don't think nope. we have. And there are a lot of There's strings no attached. Yep. yep. And we're gonna be jumping through hoops for the next four to five months. I think it's a great thing that we got it, but we need just be aware that we're going to we have money that we need to spend that we don't have. Right. Um, you mean in this year? In this year's in budget. In this year's budget. Yeah, you're right. So you're going to be going to reserves mm -hmm. um, from the finance committee. Um, so it was my impression that USDA was going to require any potential funder to have a five uh, ADA. 504 plan, self-evaluation, and transition plan completed. Is that something they've asked for? They have not asked for that, no. Okay. 
in Orange 10 years ago, they asked for it after it was awarded. Okay. And okay. they had to do on, one. That's on our And it's on our list, right? And just we make sure it's done yeah. so in case when they ask for it, yes. we have it ready. be available. Yep. Yep. Because yep. they won't fund point. you until you have it. Um, it's a good thing we're working on it. Yes. And the other issue, I don't know if you're going to hire uh, Clark of the Works for this project and how we're going to pay for it. Mm. Um, an OPM is not required for sewer treatment plants. It's not, but I think. But I think it might be the best option. But the OPM is only going to manage the project. He's not going to clerk the project. Right. You and need I, two people in that case. And I'm nervous. So just these are the things that right. I, we asked for. What is the scope? Yeah. What is the process you're going to do? It's great we got the money. We can sign the papers, but we have no process. Yeah. Until we have a process. I'm voting no also. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Anybody else have any questions they'd like to ask? Skip. Come on up, Skip. Can you hand out this question? Yeah. Diana, can you just hand this question? Oh, me? yes, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. yes. I'm going to make sure that Thank you. Thank you. The uh, hey, question Skip. came up about debt exclusion. So if I could, let me address my understanding of the debt exclusion portion of it. So I'm going to change the numbers just a little bit so we can round them off. Mm -hmm. Let's assume this project is a $20 million project. Then sewer users are going to be responsible for 75 percent or $15 million. Taxpayers are going to be responsible for 25 percent or $5 million. Uh, and of that $5 million, or we're going to bond someplace along the way. And let's just, for the, for the ease of simplification, let's say it's over a 20-year period. Uh, you can do it for 40 years. You can do it for 30. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to use a uh, – what's the, what's the going interest rate? Do we have a, a, a rough the, idea? Two, two point, for the loan, it was 2.2 two and an eighth. Two and, two and an eighth. That's the rate right now. Two and one eighth or 2.8? Two, two, two and one eighth. Two and an eighth. 2.125. 2.125. Do you mind if I just change that to 2%? It's easier to make the calculation. <laughs> yes, I'll take 2%. <laughs> so, so on a $20 million loan, 2% a year, the first year out, you're going to pay $400,000 in interest. 2%, two and an eighth would be a little bit more than that. The town is going to pay 25% of that. Sewer users are going to get, the accountant's going to say, your share of that is 75%. Most bonds, and I assume this will be done that way, most town bonds, say you're going to take that total amount, the $20 million, and you're going to pay it back over a prescribed number of years, so much each year, a $1 million. That's why, so let's use 20. So a million dollars in principal, uh, $400,000 in interest the first year. That interest, the amount of interest will drop. That million dollars a year for 20 years will not drop. So on the million four, principal and interest, 75% users, 25% the tax rate. 25% of... Uh, what did they say, 1.4 million? 375,000, I think. Mm -hmm. That's 50 cents on the tax rate. If you don't do a debt exclusion, where is that coming from? Who, where, who do we lay off? We don't have $375,000 floating around that we can just arbitrarily grab and, and pay for this. We have to find it someplace. And I assume that means that we would have to reduce staff somewhat, which I don't mind doing that. <laughs> I've argued for that. But, you know, that's not what we're talking about. So that's the reason for the debt exclusion. It has nothing to do with the user side whatsoever. It has to do only with the, the amount that we're going to ask the taxpayers to pay. And do we make that payment before we calculate the tax rate or after we calculate it? lack of better term. We need, we need that, the ability 
to go through our regular budgeting process and we're finished with that to say, well, we need another 50 cents on the tax rate to cover the, uh, and that's why we need a debt exclusion. It's essential. The numbers can be a little less if you go out over 40 years. The interest payment doesn't change the first year. But instead of paying a million dollars, if you did it over 40 years, you're going to pay 500,000. Again, that 75-25 split. I hope that's reasonably clear. That's why we went for debt exclusion. It's essential. Yep. Thank you. Bruce? Bruce, I just want to take a second to say um, I really appreciate these questions. This is the yeah, first I've well seen of them. Last time. Um, but I appreciate these questions. We'll, we'll try to get the, all the answers. Not a problem. Um, with the repayment on the town side, um, last year we paid off the Oxford loan with a significant amount of free cash. Yes. Yep. We have additional funds coming in to the town potentially in the near future relative to solar and potentially marijuana. We should dedicate those funds to pay for the sewer treatment plant and not do a debt exclusion. I think we, the small amount of money that, I think it's 100,000 based on 40 years that the townspeople would pay. Well, so I had Karen run some numbers. This was on 4 million. Uh, or I think Diana had to run quiet. some numbers. Okay. Um, and, the, and the payback was about 152000 a year. Yeah. Um, and based on our current property value of 715683 it would be about 21 cents on 1000 So we were looking at an average home of, um, you know, in 2019's average uh, was uh, 291000 that would be um, about sixty-one dollars and eleven cents um, uh, per year impact for the for the tax payer. Although yeah, that, that's fine. That's I'm, just for but that, my but feeling is that if we can short-term borrow the difference that we need between those other between the the twenty-five percent, whatever that is, mm -hmm. one hundred fifty-two thousand, mm -hmm. we end up last year with a one point two million dollars in free cash, which we didn't spend right. in the fiscal year prior. Yeah. Some of that and some of the new potential revenue sources might need to be dedicated. Mm. We, I don't know what our debt, limit, our debt t limit is, how much money we can borrow as a town. Uh, it's really I high. That, but I, I mean, we hardly. Fifty million, hundred million. I think it's like thirty-six. It's 36. In, we just looked at yeah. it last year. Our, our limit is very high. We're uh, way, uh, way low. It, we never I get mean, anywhere. No, I mean, close. do we know what it is? I want to say it was thirty something. I feel but like I it was okay. thirty-six million. Okay, let's say it's yeah. forty million dollars. Right. So we're going to use half of that mm -hmm. for forty years. It doesn't make any sense to me. If we we have a lot of issues coming up, senior center senior housing, um, library, old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, yep. our infrastructure, sewer infrastructure. Yep. We could borrow right up to that limit for 40 years and not do anything else in town. We need to look at another way of, come, of fixing this payment. Would you I'm not sure, I don't, as I said before, this is something that the town needs to look at between the finance committee yeah. and the select board. I would love Thank that. You. I'd love your input on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Any any other questions we could try to hammer out for anybody? We can't. This can't be all. <laughs> What's that all about? Oh yeah. Let's let's run through that. This is the Deerfield duty. Oh, well, I've been popping it up. You've been popping it up. So. We, we kind of, uh, Lily had put together um, the, the Deerfield duty for us. Um, and it was just kind of a way to kind of capture some of the information that we were talking about. You know, what will it cost me? Um, why are we voting on this? You know, um, kind of all these different questions. Is there a problem? If you click on, is there a problem? It brings up, you know, all these issues. And, and luckily our clarifier at the tour did not look like that today because we didn't have a high flow. Um, but there, there, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of this stuff you can see that 
You didn't see that today, but that can happen any day. Fog. Fog. Fats, oil, and grease. Um, Fats. Yep. So there's a lot of data we put up online, um, you know, just pictures and information about the needs that we have. Um, uh, and also the, the idea is like, what are we voting on? That was one of the things that people didn't understand. Yes, and this is a funding mechanism, and it's not, it is the plant per se, because, you know, if we don't do this, we'll have to go back to town meeting and get it, you know, try to get another approval to do a different way. And Bruce is talking about maybe not, not debt excluding it and doing it a, a, a different method. We have that choice. Um, I still want the federal grant money. Um, and, and then I, I, I really want a group, a group to get together, you know, hash out these issues that Darren brought up and Bruce brought up, Eric brought up, to try and, you know, we, we do have a lot of smart people in town that I think we can pull this together and figure out the funding and figure out, you know, the needs. Um, it, it's a big task. And I just, we've been looking at this for year after year after year, not we personally me, uh, but, um, you know, there's studies from 2005 and before um, all saying the same thing that needs to happen. And, and it just keeps getting more expensive every year and we don't address it. Um, we need to put our heads together, take the federal grant money where we can, put a process together that will satisfy people and move this forward. I'm, you know, I, I need that help from you. I don't have all that expertise or time. And um, I don't know how else to say it, but we need to get this together. Um, it, it, you know, it's just not, it, this is our town, this is our community, we're on the hook for this, you know. We just need to address it and stop, stop studying it, stop thinking about it, let's just, you know, get, get in the room and get it done um, and get it moving. I can't see it's gonna be any less expensive next year. Um, and it's only gonna be more if we don't, don't have the USDA helping us, so. Um, there are costs that, that Bruce brought up that you know we really need to address in this year's budget. And um, Tim, do you have any questions? Question, observation. Okay. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, so, although you haven't seen the documents yet, would it be correct to say that if you do not finalize the 2.6 million grant? and loan package that you would start over again next year, assuming people voted no and we had to go back to annual town meeting, you'd be starting over again. Well, we're again. going forward with a clarifier. Yeah, well, the clarifier yeah. is yeah, something not about this. But we can wrap the clarifier program or the clarifier repair into this program still mm -hmm. because this is supposed to be happening together. Um, but we're doing clarifier one way or the other. Right. And, and then. Yes, we would, you know, we would have to, I mean, we can, we can accept this, you know, and we would have five years to, to spend down the money. But um, I think, you know, we really need this positive vote. I mean, I, to start so, all yeah, over So, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to do is sense. just understand. So if you sign these documents, you have a five-year window, is that what you're saying? Correct. Yes. Okay, so we don't necessarily lose the 2.6 million. I hope not. I mean, I No, I it's don't committed. Say it. See, the, re the, yeah. the, money, the money that is coming, part of this, is, is part of a pool of leftover funding from other projects. So this is gonna be set aside for us, and we can spend it down within the five-year window. It's, le it's a normal, um, right, but my point, my question is, without a yes vote, we have to go back to some other form of town meeting and do another vote to yes. allow us to yes. move yes. forward. Yes, yes, we yes. cannot and move forward And if we don't yes get the vote. yes vote now, what happens, even though you've signed documents? Yeah, I, do, I don't know. Okay. I, I've got to get so that. That's a, that's, yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. You don't know. I don't know. It, it could fall apart. Say, it might not fall apart. Correct. Correct. Okay. They may, they may, I mean, I'm sure we're not the only community that, that has wrung our hands with this, that, that they've worked with. So um, will they be forgiving and give us a little more time to sort it out in a different method? I hope so. Um, I, I, I don't know that for sure. So I, I'd love to get that answer when we, when we meet with them. But, um. And this is more of a question than, um, to, to follow up with Eric Brown's uh, question about setting up a process. Mm -hmm. Assuming there was a steering committee or a sewer committee or whatever name mm -hmm. you're giving it, they would 
meet together, use the expertise in the town um, to decide what parts of this process or project we need to do. And bring it to us. But then board. the select board would still have to sign yeah, off on it. Yeah, sewer commissioners have. The sewer commissioners. We have to. So we would be part of the process. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Good. We would go to the meetings and we would have joint brain trust decisions. But ultimately but you. But ultimately whatever happens, we have to vote on it. The yes. sewer commission right. slash right. select board has, is the, the authority that says. That's correct. Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, Haley. This is a question that's been troubling me. Yeah. Uh, Lily Dwight again. Um, my understanding is when the system fails, because from what I saw today, it, I'm not a, I'm a software engineer, <laughs> not, a, not a poop engineer. Um, it sure looks like it's about to. Um, and so when it fails, my understanding is that we will be fined $10,000 a day. And where will that money come from when that happens? Potentially up to $10,000. And it comes from the town of Deerfield taxpayers. So, but I'm going to assume that um, it's going to take time to address the catastrophic failure that creates this yes. mess. So there will be numbers of days. And so if we don't do this debt exclusion, we're therefore extending the time that the system is at risk, correct? And therefore, I would suggest that the uh, Finance Committee set aside um, some amount of money to cover those fines if this, in the budgeting process, if the debt exclusion fails, because at $10,000 a day, it takes 100 days to hit a million dollars. And we will lose a million dollars, and we will have nothing except a poop-filled river, or you know, backing up into the sewer user's own basements, and the town is responsible for cleaning that up, I'm gonna assume, and so then you've gotta get the hazmat suits out of Chicopee, and it's, so I'm just saying, if this fails, the finance committee, I hope, will be, you know, setting aside all these extra monies to cover something that'll get us a boatload of nothing, but will cost us. Thank you. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't go that route. <laughs> what? What? You guys are fighting it out. <laughs> Let Jack go first. Ten thousand dollars a day. For those that don't know, when they do a tax recap sheet, it goes right on top of that. Right on top. So whatever the rate goes up to, tough. You pay it. And guess what? Finance committee has a hundred thousand dollars in reserve. That's it for a full year. So we don't have. We haven't budgeted one cent for that. Yeah. I got a couple of questions. Number one: Are you going to establish a building committee or not? What are you going to do? How are you going to control this project? Now I'll give you an example. You have three selectmen which are responsible for this thing. Mm -hmm. One of the suggestions I would have you think about, or would like to have you think about, is expand the committee to a building committee for the sewer thing mm -hmm. and add like four people to it. So you have a committee of seven. Okay. By doing that, you don't have a sewer study committee, but you'd have a committee who could turn around and vote with you on each and every project that you're doing. Hmm. We've I, got some people that are really good, really yes. qualified in town, and it's a shame that we didn't really get a chance to get rolling. Right. But the reason we didn't get rolling was because every time we'd make a recommendation to the select board, they just say, no, we're not gonna do it. Hmm. Now, I'll give you an example. EDUs, the equivalent uh, units, or ERUs, equivalent residential units. Yeah. They passed out a paper to us showing what one town did. And they showed, for example, single family house would have one unit. Okay. Apartments, one per unit. Yep. So for example, on Mountain Road, you got nine apartments. 
Yep. Why should they pay $200 a year? And I pay $200 a year, but yet they have nine apartments. Right. Condos, one per unit. Duplexes, one per unit. Yep. Mobile homes, one per unit. Townhouse, one per unit. Office buildings, one per every 2,400 square feet. Schools, a boarding school. If people live there, have yep. breakfast, yep. lunch, and dinner, one per every three persons in that school. A day school with a cafeteria and showers, one per 15 persons. A day school with cafeteria or showers, one per 20. Day school with no cafeteria or showers, one per 30. And what they did was we had them study this yeah. and come back and explain what that would mean for the town of Deerfield. Yeah. The Met School demographics. You take the total enrollment, take the total faculty and staff, you take the total of 278 divided by 20, it'd be 14 EDUs. Yeah. Now what happens is we're gonna have to pay for the sewer somehow. Right. And if we don't establish an EDU unit, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen is all the tax exempts are gonna pay nothing yeah. other than the sewer bill. Yeah. Because it's a sewer fee, they don't have to pay taxes, but they do have to pay all the yes. user fees. We're working on that. Eagle Brook, their total enrollment would be 326 divided by three, that's 109 EDUs. Deerfield Academy, they have 838 divided by three, that'd be 263 EDUs. The Deerfield Elementary School demographics, 520 kids divided by 20 is 26 EDUs. Frontier Regional demographics, 676 divided by 15 is 45 EDUs. The reason that we pushed this thing and tried to get the select board to look at it and adopt it was because it's fair. And I'll give you a good example of that. When was that? John, when was that? that? I haven't seen that. Yeah. Well, I, I we seen turned that. around and voted it and we gave it to the chairman who was supposed to bring it to you. Yeah, he didn't see it. Go ahead. I please. didn't see it either. Okay. Yep. Okay, yeah, I have not seen that. So I haven't I, seen I'm it either, John. This is the first I know I've heard it. I've heard Bruce. I've Bruce had Peter's referred talking it. about yeah. it in the past, well, but I, I didn't think it ever went. Anywhere. What we want to do is simply this: we want to get a yes vote, mm -hmm. a yes vote on the next vote. And there's a several reasons why we want a yes vote. Yeah. Because a no vote simply means no, I don't want to pay for it now, but I'm willing to take a chance on ten thousand dollar day penalties. And I don't want to do it because I figure I'm paying for my own septic system, so I don't need to pay for it. And that's not true, because the town of Deerfield owns those plants. I don't own it as a sewer user. The town of Deerfield owns them. Right. And what we have to do is we have to get the yes vote out, because guess what? If we don't vote this, and we vote it another way without going with this uh, two and a half override, what will happen is you have to cut town services to pay for this. That means you're gonna cut highway department, you're gonna cut police department, you're gonna cut schools. Schools think they never get cut? Well, let me tell you, they will get cut if we don't get this thing passed. Because that's exactly what happens. We either have to pass it with the override, and that's why the finance committee agreed. 100%, we have to make sure we get this override. Right. It's vitally important to the town, it's vitally important to the health of the town. Right. Now the question is, where do we get the money? I've said this before, that we have Two years ago, 2016 final taxes, 22% came in from industry and commercial. 2.2 million out of a $10 million budget. Yep. You're telling me that we can't take two or hundred thousand dollars or something to help pay for this thing? Absolutely we can. We have to start selling this as it's positive. It's good for the town, it's because you can grow your business. If you grow your business, your business subsidizes the town. And that's what we're doing right now. And as long as we continue to grow the business, we'll keep getting more tax money in, which lowers everybody else's taxes. That's true. So anyway, one of the reasons I said I did not want to be reappointed to the sewer study committee was because I knew all this stuff was going on, and I was told that they just said, no, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, that's not true. So if that's the case, then obviously, there's a communication gap there, and We'd love I to feel bad about again. that, but these are the things that we've talked about, and we spent hours and hours and hours no. and hours, month after month after month for like a year and a half, almost two years, 
and we came up with some solid recommendations for you. Yep. And that's what we want. We just want what's good for the town, what's fair for the town, what's fair for everybody else within the town. Right. That's what our objective was. Well, I'd love, love to hear that. So, no? John, I think we all agree on that. Well, that's why I want to make sure that I put my dibs in to say, we got to get out, we got to support this thing, because if we don't support it, we're going to have to cut town services. That's the alternative. You either support it or you start cutting town services. One because we're going to have to do fixed. it. And once they start fining us $10,000 a day, it's not too late, but it's almost too late because then it really starts hurting you. Mm -hmm. $10,000 a day, one, one year is $3.6 million. That's crazy. So well, thank you and good yes. luck on the next uh, Thank you very meeting. much. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Well, my mentor just covered just about everything I was going to say, <laughs> most of which I agree with. There's a few things that I do disagree with, but yeah. that's quite all right. I'll leave that in the past, and we'll move forward here. But one thing I would like to say to the public yeah. and the residents of Deerfield is stop flushing things down the toilets that do not belong in there. And that's an immediate fix right now, yes. and it would help our sewer system out immensely. It really would. So well, if you stop us. the flushing, Absolutely. It, would, it would have a huge impact on how it's affecting our sewer system. Absolutely. Well, Please stop flushing those items. It would items. help us limp along, Just and it would make through. a huge, I mean, huge gosh. help. Yep. Yep. Thank no you grease, Thank no you, flushables, and no dental floss. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Paul. I have, one, I have one comment. Sure. This whole situation reminds me of my 37 years in banking. And people ask me as a commercial lender, when I come and ask for $100 or $100 million, the one thing they say, well, I need financial statements, I need this, I said, the one thing you better have that's rock solid, indefensible, when it gets analyzed and kicked down the, down the halls and in the boardrooms, is a business plan. And this project has lacked that. Now, I support what Eric has said. 20 days, get your stuff together, get a plan, and bring it in front of the voters, because that's what takes most loan proposals in all my years right out the door. You don't have a business plan. You've got to be able to tell, what are you going to do with the money? Yep. What, if your, what if your primary source of repayment goes away? What if your secondary source of payment goes away? What if this happens? What if that happens? And I don't hear it from this plan. I hear $19 million, but that's it. There's, there's nothing in there. So I'm, I'm with Eric on the same thing. Okay. You know, until I see that, I'm a no. I hate, I hate to say that, but if I was to see something of a plan that I'm, I'm used to, it makes sense. And how can you, how can you make a, a really informed vote, be it yay or nay, Without that, so that's my two cents. Thank you. I thought this is the plan. There, there's a lot of no, there is a lot of plan, but I, I hear what people are saying. They want to see concrete um, steps we're going to take to to spend the money. Um, I just hope we we get the money to spend um, and to get working on this project. But yes, I would love love the help from the community to get together. We'll put together. Um, how we hope to spend the money. Uh, I've listed out a lot of this, but um, we can certainly do more and get people more educated on wh where we are moving forward. Um, we can't educate enough, so um, to get people to understand the severity of this. Um, it's nice to say no, you know, you don't have a plan, no. Um, we're gonna pay one way or the other. So um, I think we're all committed to being financially responsible. Um, we, we want uh, the public's help to get this moving forward and, and people to understand um, how serious this is and um, we want to take the help when we can get it and, um, and move forward with a, with a plan that the, that the community would be proud to have, um, that a plant that the community would be proud to have and it was, you know, is going to be there in the future for our industry and our schools. We have a lot of people that rely on this stuff. Um, we have a whole lot of work to do in the future on the other plant. Um, so, you know, we're, 
I hear that. We'll we'll take that forward. So just, thank you. Just tell people nineteen million. Yep. Just tell us what's inside that. Yeah. You know, so back had you had you come to the plant today for the tour at all? I just didn't know no, if you. I've okay. You know what it, you know you know the severity. Yeah, okay. Yep. And what we're planning to do with that nineteen million. I remember back in the day when Jabber used to run a few feet off the floor. So yeah. The place used to run. That was his home. Is that right? They should have built him an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you shoot the rats in there too, but yes. Good. I've seen it over the years. Okay. Um, and, you know, I understand the, um, the importance of a steering committee and getting it set up. Um, uh, it's also essential that the steering committee that we put together also will monitor the project so that it's a combination thing. Um, it's not, um, I don't know what term we want to use, but it's, it's important that, you know, we have the oversight. I know Bruce mentioned clerk of works, uh, but, you know, having people on this committee that can function like something like that, uh, because we've known in the past, if you don't have a clerk of works, that is in the best interest of the town mm -hmm. and not the contractor or, designer. or the designer. It's, you know, um, you know, Pink and Company is a prime example, and everybody remembers that because it was part of the school that they didn't want any oversight. And what would have happened to this town if we didn't have oversight? So it's essential, you know, on any project that we have. You know, we've got a lot of other infrastructure that's going to be going on within town. Unfortunately, is hitting us hard. So we've got to make sure we have the right people in the right place. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we'll work hard to make sure that we have something that we could present to you before the vote. And here again, I'll be looking, probably talking to you or Eric, and try, I'll try to get some input from you exactly what you're, you're talking about. Yeah. And then as a, a select board, we can put it together and make sure that we have all our ducks in a row. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming out and taking an interest yep. in this. It is a vital part of the town, and um, I'm glad you all spoke your, spoke your piece on it. So, thank, thank you, you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have another, we'll have another one on September 5th, and hopefully we can address some of those questions that people have brought up. So thank you so much. Um, I guess I just want to make a motion yeah, we got the poverty. that we um, allow you to sign um, a letter of conditions. Okay, I'm going to check with Rebecca. Um, we're putting together um, a packet now, so I want to make sure what you said about the ADA okay, stuff. They, um, come before yeah. the 20th. Okay. 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 I was thinking Diana was going to have some input on that before we okayed it. Okay. Um, I can wait. We can wait. Can wait. Can yeah. Is we'll that wait. right, okay. Michael? Awesome. Uh, signing the, uh, of the letter? Yeah, we were going to have council look at it before. I mean, if you want to resolve no, to. I think well, Karen, no, only, I only Karen, want us to say that we're going to let resolve him allow to do it. it. Right. And then if we get it on the 27th, yeah. it can go to Lisa. Yes. And then we can actually. I won't sign it until Lisa goes over yeah. it. We can yeah, we're gonna, I want to put it on the 28th anyway, right? You but just wanted wanna, to resolve. I, I just wanted to make sure that Trevor had the authority in case something happened between now and the 28th with them. Okay, I, I, you know, yeah. I just we knew, should wait knew that there was the some input coming from to be vetted by the administrator, and I wanted to make sure that we had it on the table the intention, for the a intention, part of the discussion. Right. Yeah. The intention is for Trevor to wait for yes. everybody to look at it. Yes. But yeah. I, I, on the other hand, know how USCA works, and Trevor has got him to the table, and if we need to do something to, you can always back out. Yeah. So it's not... Yeah. Okay. This is not signing our life away. Yeah. All we're doing is making sure we're tying up the money long enough to get the yes vote, hopefully in September. Okay. Well, I'll and second we... the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All no. those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. And then uh, what else did we have tonight? There was uh, one Can other... Can you get item. a copy of that EDU stuff? Because I didn't see anything on that. Did you? No. Did... Can you um, check with the... With the... No, it was, it was Jack that had the EDU. Jack had the copy. Jack? I, okay. we have, we, what we have 
is is a plan, you know, that roadmap. And and so I guess Trevor and David are going to have to meet with Eric and Paul to but figure what's, out. Because so, okay, so. we can't. We part of part. Okay. That's a good question. We put stuff on the on the face. We put stuff on Facebook. We put it on the town website. We have it here for yeah. people to pick up. This the on the table. Pat or Diana or Mike. Um, this this is it's hard to put it all out there because yeah. I play. This is here's here it is. For you. <laughs> I mean, the plan is just massive. It's a massive plan. Oh, okay. 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 I think yeah. the easiest one is myself. <laughs> yeah. Four one three. Yeah. Seven um, seven four. So I six, think. One, here's our here's okay. the application. You'd help help put stuff together. That'd be great. But part of it is we have to nail down what it is they actually want because we have the reports available and we applied for the USDA this is 13 million of the 19 million roadmap. But you, you wanted to help if we if you offered to help. I appreciate that very much. I appreciate it so be much because you know what? So all along we've kind of been getting sabotaged, like that EDU stuff. We never Trevor and I never got that. Because that went to Kip and Kip squashed it. If it went to the chair, you know, I never saw it. I never did either. He was chair of that committee. That committee was supposed to report out to the select board. And that's why we decided... We never got I, it. So I decided that I can't make any decisions of that magnitude without being part of the process. So I said that they could not meet without Trevor and I being there as well. Because we none have, of the information uh, was coming to us. We have not finished our meeting yet. Oh, sorry. What, what, else? what I'm so trying to figure out, then, was there anything else that we had so to then do? When we I, had when the re resolution. Trevor and I were ready yeah. to join them we for had, the meeting, the everybody got mad and quit. Um, we didn't okay. actually vote on the and, resolution and, yet. But oh, you didn't. Okay, no. well, I'm going to say you did, but okay. Uh, no, <laughs> yes. we're not. Yes, because um, that makes get, total um, sense. David back here to take that and vote. That's, that's um, I think you just voted it. Did we vote? Yeah, yes. He you. said second, and you said all in favor, and you said yes. You just voted it. All right, it's been too much going on. Yeah, no, you I just voted the resolution. I didn't think we finished it. I wanted to make sure we no, did. No, you did. Um, he was going to get yeah, the EDU stuff. Yeah, we just have to figure yes, out exactly what they want. Because they, 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 they actually know what's in the report. This so is the draft report. So I would like to get... So... Yeah, let me just make sure we're done. I would like to get... So let me just make sure we're done. Okay. John. This is the draft right here. And the reason why it's a draft is because we haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do. Which is each one. And you know. So I still need to I still need to adjourn the meeting. I know. I was just telling him, I was trying to tell him. I said we're gonna adjourn this meeting. <laughs> right. Um so the only I just we want to adjourn the meeting and then we can talk. Right. Hang out for one, a second. No, one second. Hang out I for a second. I make a motion that we adjourn. No, because oh. I got to do this. So. Oh, Let's okay. Give me a second. So um, I wanted to um, just take a couple seconds. This is the uh, warrant, and I gave you copies earlier yeah, of the warrant. Right. I can get you copies too, because I've been doing the warrants uh, last month. Because we've been having the warrants done at a time that we're not having a meeting, and we you're we do meeting that. on an opposite schedule from the warrant, right? So, uh, so I've been signing the warrants. I gave um, Dave a copy of that, and get you a copy of them too. These are the warrants that I'm going to sign, go through, and sign tonight. Um, was there anything else we wanted to address tonight? We did the resolution. You wanted to talk about um, about uh, 
position. Priscilla. Yeah. So not just the, no. on that the 28th, or did you want to say Well, we can, well I said the 28th, but, no, but we can vote on it tonight to go out and advertise it. Do you want to do that tonight, or do you, what well, do you want to do? I put it on the 28th, so could we just wait since it wasn't well, on the agenda? Well, I was just trying to, I wanted to do a nice thank you for, it's all kind of combobulated in here right thank now. thank you for, for Priscilla. Oh, well, can we do know? it on the 28th? Yeah. Every time, right, till the end of right, September. Right, till the end of September. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. the sooner, well, time. but the sooner we can advertise, because you're going to want somebody to work with for a while. Right. Yeah. You just can't throw somebody into that position. Right. Oh. right. I can get it all ready and get a draft and going and everything for Wednesday, and then you can vote and it. And then you we wanted can... to get a group together, right, to start looking at what we want to have in there and uh, well, start yeah, hunting for. Well, put an interview group together to hire right. the person. So. Right. So we can have we can have that discussion. Okay. On Wednesday I'm as well. for that. That yeah. makes sense yeah. to do that. So yeah. and and get the ball rolling on. Yeah. It. yeah. So you like because, I said. So they would have you know, time. I'd like to have Victoria involved with it a little bit because yeah. she knows because she's not only in there. She's a zoning board mm -hmm. and some other. And she put a big list together yeah, of I know. all for yeah. tasks that she does. So that'd yeah. be that'd be great. Okay. Um, and then at the twenty eighth. Um, yep. Twenty eighth, we can welcome Mike. Yep. Uh, and get him all together. Oh, okay. So, okay. okay. All right, so um, I have a motion uh, to adjourn. Uh, so I make a motion. All Second. Of you, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.